Um, reserve fund transfer is the first thing. I don't have any of those to deal with, so we can move on. Second on the agenda is the line item budget, and as far as all my records have it, we are done with the line item budget, so there is nothing to deal with on the line item budget at this point. So moving on to the annual town meeting warrant articles, we have not received anything new from the Board of Selectmen, so we're still working off the file that it's ATM warrant articles FY23 draft five, which we worked with last week when we took the notes on, so we'll just start working through there. Article one, town reports, we've already considered and voted upon. So article two is the Community Preservation Committee report, which needs some action, and I know Mike made contact with the chair. Yes, and um, she's still putting together that report with the assistance of Barbara, so um, I, I don't have it uh, for t tonight, so hopefully we'll have it uh, for next week. Okay, then Article 3 is the administration funds, which is the, it's a little bit higher this year than it was last year. Yes, and uh, as we went back and looked at this and uh, pulled up... Uh, past finance committee reports for many years, um, that number seems to bounce around each year with no specific purpose. So uh, it's been 15,000 some years, 22,000 others, 20,000 in, in other years. Um, so they, they just set it at 20,000 um, this year. Again, um, may, maybe to justify the increase from last year is they, they do have a clerk now that where they didn't have one before. So there may be some expenditures for clerk time. Okay, no, you're just watching? All right. I just hope you have the latest. Um, they collectively didn't make one change to the warrant that got last year. We do not have it. All right, I will. <coughs> it, won't, it won't help us tonight. We don't have access to tonight, so we'll wait until next week. Yeah, but I need, you would need to print it out for everybody. We'd all have to be working from the same thing. Right. Okay. All right, so we're just, about it just needs the one article, not the whole the book. Okay. Yeah, but it depends if they're renumbering articles because of it. Yeah. All right, we'll do that. So, um, but again, these, these funds are maybe to support the, the, the clerk and some other admin activities. It's also uh, for some miscellaneous expenses that may come up during the year. So there's nothing, as in past years, nothing um, specific in mind just yet. But if you need to do a little research on a piece of property or, or you, you need some um, uh, expend some funds in order to pursue an, uh, something that comes up during the year. This is what uh, would be used for. So, Mike, so, so with that uh, explanation, I just need to do one thing here. I'll make a recommendation that the um, um, Finance Committee vote to approve, uh, recommend that town meeting approve the article as written. Okay. Do I have a second? Ken? Any further questions or comments related to Article 3? All those in favor? And that's seven to nothing. <clears throat> All right, so moving on, we did Article 4, Community Preservation Debt. Article 5 is Community Preservation Gravestone Restoration, which is a continuing project of how many years now? Um, I, I think I looked back two books and my notes in the book said this is year 15 of it. Um, so I think the last time I tallied it up, we were, we were well over $70,000 expenditures uh, towards this uh, project. Again, this is one, um, I don't believe, I haven't seen a report where there's a specific plan for this year, but uh, they typically ask for $9,500. And then uh, typically partner up with a, a firm that they've been using for multiple years to uh, find some things that need fixing and repairs and, they put in, and address them during, during the year. People are dying again. Yeah, no, and, and, and sometimes it's the 9,500 is one gravestone and sometimes it's 100. It all depends on which one they slated for restoration, if I remember correctly. Yeah, you're right. Last year we had a separate one because we had a repair one that was massively damaged. I'm sorry, Jim, I missed you with the truck. Last year we had a, I think we had an addition our article or something came up because one of the uh, monuments there was more of a monument, which is a gravestone. Oh, that's right. 
was massively damaged, I think, by a tree limb that came down on it or something. Really. You know, Jim, you may want to move to this chair so people can hear you talking at home. Yeah. But that's how, that's what I was remembering, Jim. It was a separate article last yeah. year in addition to this? Yes. Thank you. Article 5, CPA, Gravestone. So are you making a motion? I'm going to vote against this article, so someone else should make it. Again, I think it's a great project. It's wonderful. Um, but but the, uh, the, the in perpetuity of this, I think there's some other funding options uh, to pursue. Uh, but I also believe it's a, a, an appropriate use of CPC funds. Anyone want to make a motion? To I'll make a motion. We'll prove it as recommend to whatever the proper wording is. Recommend yeah. the town. Recommend that the town vote to approve the article as written. All right, so that's Jim Waddick. Do I have a second? Larry. Any further questions or comments related to this? Go ahead, Larry. I understand the in perpetuity when we talked about this, I think, a year ago, uh, Mike. Uh, it's got to be in perpetuity because people keep dying. And <laughs> the existing uh, gravestones keep getting worse, thanks to weather. And the funds spread over five years, as I recall, come to um, something like, is it 75,000 against nearly 100 million? Uh, actually spread over three years, so that w while 75 is not insignificant, honoring the dead is significant. Again, I don't, I don't disagree that we, we should maintain that and as part of the, uh, the, the care that the people who uh, uh, purchase uh, and, Plots over there are, are expecting, and um, so uh, again, I think it's a great project. I, I don't want to argue against it, but I just hard hard to get behind it after so many years. A slight typo in the article I just created. There was an ex extra space between the end and more. This is this is active, right? This is an active this cemetery. Key? Oh yeah, well, and, and the and the inactive one across the street. So I, was saying, I remember one session whenever this came up, yeah, so which way. And it was like, what's the cost? And he's like, I forget the price was really insignificant, like the, the burial was like 5,000. And the question was like, well, how, when was the last time we raised the rates on these things? And you know, so I, I mean, it's good, but, but it seems like there's, there's room, maybe not in this article, but in the future to take a look at the cost and, and how doing that and maybe your price increase on that. Uh, this this yeah, actually yeah, doesn't yeah. have anything to do with interring people, though. Yeah. This is just the updated okay. maintenance of the stones, so that they're still legible and people who want to come and do research or etch gravestones and all that can do it. Okay. My point was if you had if you, if you increased it and you had money, maybe you'd have excess money left over, and you could basically use that to maintain it, restore it on an ongoing basis, rather than doing some <laughs> other way. Although um, Mike is correct in pointing out in this case, there's a, I think it's 10% of their funds from collected by the CPA, which we all pay into to our property, it has to go to historic preservation. Mm -hmm. And this is one of the, one valid use of those funds towards historic preservation. And the one drawback, is, if I understand your point, Ken, about um, if there are excess funds, then apply them. Well, what if there are not excess funds? Hmm. Right. Then we'd probably go come here, right? Well, uh, uh, why, take a, uh, why take a risk? Uh, right. w why not uh, be forthright, let the town uh, ex expend, uh, will it be zero point, and then just start counting the zeros for a while before you get to the numeral one? over say three years against almost a hundred million dollars which is just about three consecutive years of total budget what are we actually talking about besides honoring the dead oh yeah there's no question that's a goal okay any other comments all right then i have a first and a second to recommend approval is written all those in favor opposed and it'll be six to one. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.
I'm going to be over there someday, and someone's going to have to make sure my stone uh, is, is good for the next 300 years. <laughs> no stone on turn. You could leave mine. You will. So we are moving to Article 6, Community Preservation, Town Hall Storm Windows. Yes. So um, I, I think Robin's talked about this uh, before, that we're trying to install storm windows on the town hall here and get the right ones that make them, uh, that kind of fit the stark nature of the building. Um, we did, and, and maybe we should include this in the summary box, um, this is not a $15,000 project. It's, it's a um, $32,600 project because um, back in the FY 2021 um, annual town meeting uh, warrant article six, we uh, town meeting appropriated $17,600 uh, from CPC funds uh, for this project. Um, the cost of implementing that has gone up and this is the additional funds that are needed in order to kind of get this to the finish line. Do we know, just one question, is it just the town hall or are they including the center office building in this too? I, mean, I know it says town hall here, but I mean, I would think both buildings are in need of storm windows since when we actually renovated the buildings, we weren't allowed to put in, you know, what would be considered efficient windows because they had historically accurate. I understand this to just to be town hall. Okay. So why is it allowed now? It's not. They're actually putting on storm windows that hang on the outside of mm. the existing windows that it's not, you know, I guess the building used to have these storm windows on them, so they're considering it historically accurate. They, they had those versus, you know, double or triple pane windows. Whatever window, um, you know, treatment is going on the exterior of the building to provide the uh, protection from, from the sun and also <coughs> provide additional, um, you know, protection from the elements. Uh, will we'll be acceptable from a historic perspective for, for the building there. <coughs> you get like tax rebates for this, for energy efficiencies from the state or anything? That no. I know, Barbara, did you, I don't know if you heard that question. Is that something you could answer? Or do we get any type of rebates back from the state because we're making the building more energy efficient? Um, not that I'm aware of. Um, but I did want to comment that the center office building, there are already storm windows on that building. That project was already completed. Okay. I remember that. Right. Any other questions or comments related to this article? Well, of course, before I move on, I actually need a motion to. So I will make a motion that the finance committee, committee recommend the town meeting a vote to approve the article as written. Do I have a second, Ken? Any further questions or comments? All those in favor? And that's seven to nothing. So I would just recommend that maybe the, uh, the summary box, we, we include something in there. I put some notes in the summary box here, 32.6 total, FY21 article. You told me the number, I forget what it was, out of six. six. I'll make sure we kind of add something in there. Maybe even put the center office in. Oh, a good point. As well, or it was done yeah. every year. Just done previously. Yeah. Same project for the center office building has already been completed, something like that. Oops. It's seven and nothing. Seven and nothing. All right, moving on. So, Article 7, Learn and Survey, Nine River Road. Sure. So, um, there is a homeowner who is looking to provide um, uh, an easement on, on this property, which is a, um, a a budding or part of uh, the, the um, adjacent to the um, Grand Trunk Railro Railway uh, path that is uh, the trail committee is, is working on uh, extending and uh, connecting up there. 
and uh, they would like to um, provide an easement for additional space uh, along that way to, to the trail committee in honor of um, a, de a deceased family member there. And um, in, in order to make that work uh, so, and, and get that easement and bring an article for that, that easement, uh, some survey work needs to take place. And so the CPC is looking to um, Thank you. No, you're right. uh, Thank you. get, get these funds and, and do that survey so that we can, uh, so that they can um, um, perhaps uh, get this easement donated to them and, and have this extra land as part of that Grand, Grand Trunk Rail uh, Trail. Now, did you get Jim and Lisa? Yeah. Sorry. Thank you. Um, uh, two, two other comments on making this one. Uh, the, way, uh, the way it was explained to me, this is not, we need this easement in order to make that trail go forward. I think they have all the other trails. This is just an additional piece of, of property that would um, uh, you kind of enhance uh, the, the trail, um, uh, part of that Grand Trunk Trail. And um, um, since we're coming up to town meeting, it, it, you know, having this article uh, is, is uh, the way they're looking to go. But you know, had this come up and no special town meeting was coming, this is the type of uh, activity that could be come from that administrative uh, account there. So. And just to comment, I watched uh, Tom Chamberlain talk about this at one of the meetings on TV okay. in recent months. And basically, this is almost like a land swap. It's just to make it convenient so that the trail can continue because where it crosses, it crosses Farquhar Road right at the corner there by River Road. And there's a house right there. What they want to do is somehow accommodate it so that the people don't have the trail going through by their back steps or something along that line. You know, it's, 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 and it was going to happen. I think, Mike, you were right. This was going to happen. It just happens to be convenient. It comes up at town meeting, but they were looking to pull this off. And Tom, I, I don't remember the full explanation, but it seemed like it was the reasonable thing to do from both perspectives. Yeah. Um, so with that as background, I will uh, make a motion that the Finance Committee recommend the town meeting vote to approve uh, Article 7 as written. Do I have a second? I'll second that. I mean, I'm sorry, Jim. Oops. Oh, that would be my sister calling. <laughs> Rocker, huh? How do you have that? Um, let's see. I'm sorry, that was Jim who seconded, right? Yes. Uh, um, I'm waiting for Jim to sit back down so we can take our vote. I was silencing my phone. I learned that after I do this. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We have a first and a second. Any further comments? All those in favor? And that's unanimous. It's seven to nothing. All right. Is the town administrator still here? Yes. So, before we move to the new printed one that you just gave us, you have the same draft number on this. Yeah. Is that is that you didn't start draft six or anything like that? You're working with the same set. Well, I heard you say that the, the draft you got was from the 23rd. Yeah. Uh, well, no, it's fiscal year 23, draft five. I, mean, I get, we're working with that file. So what I would do is going to be, I would say now we're going to work from a paper copy entitled something, but you have draft five on it again. I mean, we could cross out and call it draft six, I guess, for our purposes. Unless it's just the same one, it sounds like. The, well, yeah. the reason I came up with it, I already said you got a copy. You received the, uh, the Yep. 
I got it. It, it's it's the one be just before the petitioned article. Uh, we'll, when, when we get there, we'll find a way to incorporate it if we get there tonight. Yeah. All right. So it's but otherwise this is exactly the same as what we already have sent to us electronically. All right. So then we'll we'll stick with the electronic copy. And because I mean, and none of these articles we could actually take up and act upon because they are, like you said, placeholders. So they have no no actionable thing we can do for it anyways. Although I did talk with Barbara, and just so you're aware, and you can let your predecessor go on for your successor. Thank you. No, that we basically have two more meetings in order to consider all the warrant articles. So um, they can't sit there and drag their feet for much longer. They have to get us something we can act upon. It's on the agenda. It's on the agenda for Monday. Um, the only thing is, Mayor Blanchard is. Yeah, to May 12th. Yeah. <coughs> so necessary, maybe that means I'm No. Oh. I, I, it would be better if they met beforehand and cons considered some of this stuff because, you know, you're getting into now we're dealing with days. Yeah. To, you know, like I said, it, it's on the agenda for Monday. I'm hoping we can finish it. Okay. I mean, just because one of five people aren't here doesn't mean town business has to stop. Okay, so thank you for this, and but we'll, go, we'll work with the same article, you know, draft five file we have now, and we'll get an updated electronic copy. Maybe change the title to draft six or something like that so we can just keep, that'd be perfect. Oh well, no, thank you, I know it's a pain. It's a, no, no, it's good, it's nice. Yeah, okay. Well, yeah, for us. Yeah. We're not going to work off of this paper right. document. We'll keep working off the electronic version we've already identified. Okay. All right. Article. Article oh, eight. Wait, wait, hang on. Did we actually vote that? Yes, we did. Yes. Mm. Article eight. Yeah. Community trail and parking lot construction. Yes. So. Um, as described in, in more detail in the summary box, uh, the trail committee is, uh, was seeking some funds from CPC for some uh, trail upgrade projects, um, uh, improvements to some of the parking areas, including um, uh, putting up a, a parking, a 12 and 15 uh, parking uh, area, car parking area at the Fiskill um, trails uh, that were uh, approved at last year's uh, uh, town meeting and have, have started uh, some of the uh, trail work up there to create those trails. So um, again, it's, it's funds to support trail improvement at various trails uh, in, in our current network and to improve parking access at, at several locations. Mike, do you know if the 12 to 15 car parking lot on the newly acquired Fisk Hill property is as it was originally intended, or have they now moved that? Originally, they moved it, they had it down the road. My understanding there was consideration of having it moved to a different location. I did not ask that question, and I, I don't, uh, don't know what their, their plan was. The, the reason for my questioning is when that trail was agreed upon, <clears throat> very specific map, we had people in the community there who registered concern about where the parking may or may not be. Yep. And we approved it with a certain understanding of where that parking would be. And I just want to ensure that they haven't changed that without notification. Mike, is that a question you can take back to Sounds like an important matter. I'll, I'll let's skip over this one and I'll, I'll follow up. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Mike. Okay. So, moving forward. Okay. 
Moving from Article 8 to 9, um, community preservation, town, town library restoration of trim and cornice molding. And I forgot to take a look at it when I parked and drove by, but. Um, desperate need of help. The, uh, the, the way it's described to me is that the, uh, the, the wooden trim on the library is in desperate need of help and yeah. if people, instead of looking at the roadway driving by, look at the building, we'll, we'll, we'll see uh, the deteriorated condition. Um, so <laughs> that, that work uh, does need to be replaced and um, they have gone to CPC for funds to come out of the historic uh, account uh, in the amount of $65,000 to complete that project. Adam, I'll take that as a motion. That you I'll make a motion then the, the Finance Committee recommended town meeting vote to approve the article as written. I have a second, Larry. Any further comments or questions related to Article 9? Right. The only question I mean, materials wise, would it, would, would now a composite material so you can put it up and it's, it looks good, it looks like wood, never deteriorates, you don't have to maintain it. Do we, is there something that will automatically, as we go along the way, use that material? Are we going to continue to put wood on that's going to rot and and you know, five years from now we're doing it again or I mean this I know it's kind of like in the weeds here but no I I know that we had that discussion because this came up in the Capitol and I can't remember the answer Barbara I'm hoping you can help me out with that you know are we using MDF type materials or are we just going to replace with like for like uh, I don't know Kevin but we're using CPA funds it's a historic building so I would assume it's going to be wood but I can I can confirm that and get back to you for your next meeting. So I, I wouldn't want to hold this up for the type of material. Uh, you know, this is a, pro, a, a project by done. Robin. I'm going to rely on the facility uh, coordinator to um, you know strike the right balance between material that provides a lifetime of low maintenance and and um, better resistant to the elements than 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 bare wood, but also meeting whatever historic. Um, uh, requirements are needed for, for the particular. And I need a comment. This has come up numerous times in, in this forum in the past, and it's consistently we're not allowed to use that when it's uh, money from the CPA. Historical restoration has to be done with the original. We had to reside the uh, nursery school, and we had to use wood because we couldn't use uh, uh, vinyl siding. We can't use any of that stuff. It all has to be original to the. If it's if it comes out of historic paint preservation, paint has to be like regular historical paint rot, and stuff. It's like going to rot just like it did 100 years ago. Paint? No, I don't think we go oh, there. Oh yeah, you got to. Oh. <laughs> I don't think they'll let us use lead paint anymore. But besides that, it's got to. Be. This is the English one. Larry, am I? Does that sound familiar to you? Yeah. So, good try though, Ken. It'd be nice if we could. <laughs> okay, and just. Kathy and I were having a conversation, I'm sorry, but just, just so we just rec we kind of made the spelling of molding consistent between the title and the, the meat of the article. You know, in, in the title was it spelt with the English U, and, and in the actual meat of the thing, it's just molding like we would spell it without the U. So <laughs> we've corrected that. Okay. Which way did you correct it? Without the U, we remove the U in the we're, title. We're we we can't actually change the content of the actual article, but we can change the title. Is that a historically correct uh, adjustment that you made there? <laughs> How old is the building? Is it pre-revolution? Oh, I'm not going there. I mean, <laughs> well, set type, yeah. I mean, technically, they spelled Sturbridge wrong when they when they came over, right? Because it's got an, it's got an O in, in, when it's in England. So, so with that discussion, um, I will make. I have a first and a second. Right. Have a first Wait, and a second. So, any other well, comments? Who was the second? Larry. Larry. Yeah. Okay. Not seeing any further discussion. All those in favor of Article Nine? That's seven to nothing. All right. Ten. Let me check my notes. Historical preservation plan. Okay, so I don't have the article number, but you have the blue book. So at last year's um, town meeting, uh, we had an article. Article uh, five. Thank you, article five. Um, that, that was just like this, where uh, we were looking to, uh, 
the um, star committee was looking to go out and engage a um, um, consultant to go out and develop a uh, preservation plan for a, a number of identified historic you know, properties in, in town. Uh, and we that was funded by town meeting uh, to, at $20,000. At the time, there was um, uh, a hope, an expectation that they would apply for a grant and, and get an additional $20,000 uh, to perform the work. Um, at this stage in time, there, we're not sure if that grant application you know, will go in in time uh, to, to perform the work or whether it will be accepted and, and funded or not. So in order to keep the plan moving forward, uh, the committee is looking uh, for an additional $20,000 uh, to be able to move forward with the plan should the, uh, the grant not uh, move forward or be successful. You know, it says in here, though, that they had a grant part of which this would be used to match. So are they looking for another grant this year that they don't know they're gonna get? You know, when you look at the box in last year's book. Um. Because that's what it sounds like here. It sounds like they're trying to go for a, a, a second year of grants, and if it's not available, they still like to go forward. But the, the way this was explained to me was that those grant funds have not been uh, received, um, and 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 this this was in order to to continue to move forward. Should again timing of the grant. Okay, so Barbara, do you know the answer to that question? We, we did or did not receive the grant? I don't know the answer to that, sorry. You're right, Kevin, it does specifically say that the grant was received. Yeah. Mm. All right. Um, yeah, my notes, my notes were, were kind of reflect the way I remember the conversation. We gave 20000 to match the Mass Historic Grant um, last year. We may not get the grant, and, and so this will enable this to go forward um, versus holding off on this project until the next round of grant um, fundings become available and, and we go through and make the application. I guess the question is what happened to the last year's funding? Is it now this plus last year's gets them the plan? Yes, I don't think it's, I'm, I, I understand that they didn't spend the money because they didn't have the matching funds and they need about the $40,000 to, to do the work. So without those grant funds, they didn't have enough to get it done. So rather than continuing to wait and push this down the road, you're going to use additional CPC funds to, to make this happen if, if they don't get the grant funds. Uh, in, in, well, I'm sorry, sure. but wouldn't they need to ask for 40 then? As if they didn't spend this year's 20, does it, that stay the, Last year's article will roll over. Okay. So they don't have to say they have to, they're asking for the, the incremental amount. Yep. Yeah, it's not like it's the line item budget and it gets turned back. This is, we've allocated this these funds to that purpose. Yeah, so until <coughs> we send that allocation, it stays there. Helpful, thank you. Okay. So... I don't have a motion, Mike, or anything. Do you? I'll, I'll start by uh, making a motion that the Finance Committee recommend that town meeting uh, vote to approve the article as written. Do you have a second? Sorry. It's like on a swivel <laughs> over here. Oh. Any further questions, comments? All those in favor? Opposed? Jim, I'm sorry I missed you. In favor or opposed? Six to one. And then finally. Housing and so on. Yes. So there is an article. Um, so, so let me step back. CPC gets gets a pile of money. Um, it, it's a well, pretty well-funded um, 
program, both from, from taxpayer money and matching state funds. Um, we spent a lot of money on star, uh, re recreation. Um, we, we spent some money on historic. We have really not spent a lot of money on the housing part of that. I know that's an issue that's come up. Um, CPC has said, you know, they're not the ones to go out and implement the housing plan. They're the ones to, to provide funding should someone come with a, a, a housing plan and need some, some support for that. Um, so the town planner, um, and there's a future article in here, has, has come up with um, creating um, a housing trust article uh, that will create a, a housing trust uh, within the town and, and, and uh, staff it with trustees as listed in, in that article. And, um, and then that would be a way to, to through the trust, which is a, a, a you know, more of a state uh, recognized program and a way to get additional monies for housing purposes in addition to just the, the local CPC funds. Um, uh, and, and to move that forward, they're looking to hire um, a, a consultant here to come together and, and put together a, um, a housing plan that could be used and kind of form the basis of that. So this article um, is would use CPC funds to to bring in um, a professional to help um, you know, put together a program to meet the goals of that um, uh, affordable <coughs> housing trust that that's part uh, subject of a future article in, in the in the warrant. Oh, that's right. I was wondering, do you know what article this future trust is? I was just trying to see no. if it's even there. We adopted that in 2019. Thought we adopted that in 2019. The affordable. It's an article trust. 33 that what's Mike talking about. We. We yeah, that's a bylaw. We already adopted the Affordable Housing Trust law, I believe, in 2019. So this is just a bylaw to implement it. So this is just something in our general bylaw defining the rules and functions of. And, and establishing the board of the trustees that would kind of implement the plan. I believe Lee, uh, when, when she comes next week, we'll talk about that article that came from planning. Okay, I just want to make sure that I, we note this is related to Article 33. <laughs> I mean, why, 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 I mean, would, if Article 33 should fail and the town doesn't want to have this housing trust, would they need Article 11? Should Article 33 be considered before Article 11? You know, if, if the other one fails, then, um, well, if you know you're not going to vote for the other one and they're tied, you, you can turn this one down. If the other one fails, uh, it doesn't mean we have to expend the money. This article can just close out and go back to CPC at, at the end of the year. I, you know, it would be. And, and Kathy does raise another point. If there is an, I, I had connected the two together, but if there is another uh, plan, uh, you know, standalone plan, even if that bylaw doesn't pass to still develop a housing plan that can be used in town, then these funds can be used for that as well. So is that what you're saying, Kathy? We have a housing plan? So I know that the housing committee did ask for money from the CPC and they turned them down this year. But yet they funded um, a consultant, so I don't know what find that confusing. In fact, I yeah. guess the CPC didn't know that we had adopted the um, trust in 2019. But I did go back and look, and they did adopt it. We did adopt it at town meeting. It's a state law. It, it, but I guess I don't remember exactly what the state law provides for us. Provide these trustees, this, this whole mechanism that they're looking to put in Article 33? I don't know. So maybe we need to do a little digging in here between this and Article 33. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. Rob, Rob, I'm quick. Okay, I'll, I'll uh, follow up with Gene. Great, thank you. You might want to... Yeah, point to 2019. Too. And also maybe contact the Housing Committee or whatever it's called. Mm -hmm. I, I could That's part of the overall them. plan. Uh, yeah. The town really needs a little bit of assistance to help move a plan forward. You, you, you might have a, a housing partnership or housing committee now, you might have or authority, you might have this other one, but you kind of need someone to help bring this plan together and then you know let these other committees kind of take that and, and help 
execute and put it put into motion uh, it'd be good plan. though to be able to communicate what that vision is yeah. you know to everybody because right now i'm not i have a sense of what i believe it is but i can't say for a fact that this is what it is so i'd like to have, be able to say this is what it is you know i i, I agree with you I'll, I'll, I'll do some research thank you all right so article 12 is the town budget we've already taken care of that Construction 13 we voted for. 14 is public access. Taking care of that. STA we voted on 7 to 1. Betterment Committee. That has not been taken care of yet. So we're on to Article 16, Betterment Committee. And there is a section in your budget book that talks about all the things that were. Um, Voted on and what were considered, et cetera, et cetera. So, I believe there were some questions about the uh, ATB. For the oh, police yeah, that's right. And you've got a, we got a bunch of different emails on that from the police chief, the fire chief. Um, I think it was Tom um, Chamberlain related to the, to the things. So there's, there's at least three existing out there. One of which is really big, and I think this one really relates to the police department's explanation, which I'm trying to remember when I sent that out. So, so the police department here, the responding, they have one e-bike, can only be used seasonally. They have one two-person Polaris UTV from 2008 that can be used on some trails and both are solely used by the um, PD. Please advise the Finance Committee that our UTV cannot access the majority of our trail systems due to how wide it is and that's why we we're requesting the ATV. And that the UTV is also proven useless in deep snow because of its low clearance, whereas the ATV would be able to perform rescue missions in deeper snow. And that's... Um, from Earl Dessert, the chief of police sent to Barbara, then forwarded to me and forwarded on to you. <laughs> oh, I think there was something from Tom that said that there were some, there was an ATV available in the shed, but I mean, that, that they'd have access to, but yeah, there is. Can't some. really pick it out of one one thing out of here. Well, again, he calls it UTV, two Kubota UTVs, utility trail vehicle. He notes it. One is four and five feet wide, so I'm wondering again if these are just too big to get to some of the real far parts of trails, and that's why they're going with the smaller ATV. But you're right, it does note here, Tom says the police and fire departments were given keys to the shed, so they Access have access to, yeah. to them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So. So this one may be iffy. I would think that the next one on top of this next year for the next route may be you know, one more than we really need. But, uh, well, I mean, I like the idea Tom has in there too, that they're looking to buy the treads that will go yeah. over the existing tires. So instead of being tires, it'll look more like you know, treads that your snowcats would have. Mm -hmm. So I mean, that would probably, if it's gonna come back next year and they want another one, they should just get a set of treads. And that should be what they ask for. Yeah, that makes more sense. Because unless that ATV has the treads, it might not be able to go in the wind, in the deep snow either. Right. <coughs> All right. I mean, do we want more information, or is someone comfortable making a recommendation on Article 16 for the Betterment Committee? I'm comfortable making a motion to recommend as written. Okay, I have a second. Second. It's Mike, JF, and MH. Okay, any other questions? Okay, all those in favor? Seven to nothing. All right, capital improvement plan. Mm -hmm. 
Pretty much, you know, you can see the ambulances in here in addition to using some of the ambulance stabilization fund. As questions or comments? Otherwise, so we're starting to dip into free cash uh, again. I, 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 maybe I can do it offline, but is there a, somebody have a summary of what our starting free cash balance is and what we're going to run it down to as a result of all these articles? I did see that. I think. Robert, you don't happen to have that in front of you, do you? Basically, Mike's question goes after we're done improving all of the free cash articles, you know, basically, what's our starting balance, what we're spending, and what do we end up with? So I, I don't have the final tally yet because I'm waiting to see a lot of those placeholder articles that I'm waiting for the uh, Board of Selectmen to take action on will be from free cash. But free cash was certified at a little bit over six million, and the only thing that's come out of it so far was at the special town meeting the funding of the police contract, which I believe was like maybe a hundred and. $20,000 um, somewhere around there. So hopefully after Monday's selectmen's meeting, I can provide you that information. Is that make me into you? We're not going to run it down to zero, right? You're, you, you, you don't offhand. We're not going to run it down. No, we're not going to run it down to zero, but you know, there's a lot of unknowns at this point. So, you know, one of the big ones is the HVAC for the library. I mean, the price tag has been from 600000 to over a million dollars, depending on um, whether it triggers uh, a sprinkler system yeah. needing to be put in. So I, I talked to Bob about that today, and they're, there's a, they're doing some study now to determine that, and hopefully we're going to have the answer to that next week. But there's also the parking lot. Um, so, no, I, I mean, I wish I had an answer for you, but... Um, it won't prevent you know, me from moving forward. We're, we're looking to buy. Right. We're looking to buy land. There's the tax rate, tax rate relief article that they haven't taken any, any action on yet. The HVAC system. So there's a there's a lot of unknowns at so, this point. Which, like I said, hopefully you'll have more info for your meeting on Thursday. I'm but no, we're some of these not things draining it down to zero. So some of these articles here in the back. That, that don't have dollar figures with them? How are they investigating the use of the ARPA funds for them? Why did they all have to be? Yeah, so they've, they've pretty much exhausted um, the ARPA funds. So the ARPA funds come in two installments and the Board of Selectmen voted maybe two meetings ago as to what those expenses were. Um, the only thing that I can tell you is the parking lot article, they are looking to use ARPA funds for, for part of the parking lot. So I believe, I believe it's 200, so the 230, which is the placeholder article, right. I believe they voted another 230 or somewhere in that vicinity to come out of ARPA funds. Um, they did vote a small amount of money uh, for the study that's happening now for the library HVAC out of ARPA. Um, but I don't think there's anything else on the warrant that is looking to be funded out of ARPA. Those were the only two. Uh, Barbara, a question about the um, communications, the public safety communications. I have heard a number in the neighborhood of five million. Uh, do you know anything at all about the status of that? So the last I knew, the, feasibil the feasibility study hasn't been completed. The last I knew, but the last number that I was given was about five and a half million. 
And that's one of my concerns and what I had expressed at the joint meeting with the board and the FinCom is, you know, while we may have a nice healthy free cash balance, we have a lot of capital items that are coming down the road that are well beyond the balance that we currently have. And as all of you know, um, it takes a, a long time to replenish a free cash balance when you draw it down. It took so, a long time uh, to build it up. That is, that's definitely a concern. Yeah. Um, Kevin, further. Uh, to what extent, Barbara, does um, Standard & Poor's or any of the other bond rating agencies examine uh, the uh, level of uh, free cash when they're deciding how to uh, rate a community? Oh, that's, that's definitely one of the key criteria in a bond rating. And so they look at our reserve balances, our reserve policies, uh, what level we maintain our reserves. And uh, Bob and I have been talking about uh, bringing forward an update to our financial policies to actually increase the percentage of reserves. Because again, as I spoke about at that joint meeting, with the cost of everything going up, it doesn't take much to deplenish um, or deplete a balance. So. Uh, hopefully that recommendation will be coming uh, before the end of May. I, I don't have a number for you yet because I want to I want to do a little uh, digging to see what like uh, MGFOA and GFOA are recommending for those balances at this point. But we have not we have not increased those percentages um, since those policies were adopted. So, so I think it's time to do that. Thank you. The, the town currently has a double A plus with a stable outlook. So a, is it a safe generalization that more is better? Yes. Thank you. Back to the um, specific, specifics of this article, and I'm not sure who this question is to. But the summary of the comprehensive, comprehensive fiscal policy seems to be um, inaccurate with the, with two, it says that it's, these are to be between 5,000 and 100,000, and there are two amounts on here over 100,000. So it says that we have a policy, it says that this um, article is compliant, but it doesn't seem to be on its face. I, I think I, I see what you're saying. I think in this, I mean, one of them is that combination okay. for the for the ambulance. Right. Part of that is 223,000 coming out of that ambulance stabilization fund, in addition to the 375. And I don't. I'm not really answering your question because I think where we're going with this is that we have the funds to actually pay for these. You know, basically, which are one-time, long-lived capital items with free cash without having to use short-term borrowing okay or having to incur it well i think that Correct. that may be the case but if that's true we have to adjust the summary because is, that is not consistent with the comprehensive fiscal policy that was approved so yeah, I, could, I would say it's the other way around the, the we have yeah. two items the, the summary box may correctly uh, summarize what the policy is we have two items in here that are inconsistent with that policy and we but, but all the, it says, an explanation as to why why we're, we're, we're treating them uh, by paying for them free cash versus versus uh, or as part of this article versus uh, our uh, raising but, but it says specifically yeah that this is consistent with that policy in here I think I think this is I, I understand what you're going at and I think maybe we just well, I think we'll an explanation adjust. within the summary is fine. Yeah, it's just we've. Uh, I think this is just a cut and paste from last year's where we didn't have any that were outside of the, the policy. So yeah, but I, I see what you're saying. I'll I'll make sure to try and highlight this and, and exp 
and had some verbiage related to that. For science accounting. <laughs> for science accounting. <laughs> no, it is a good catch. People will. No. No. But but I mean, the rationale was thinking we had the money to pay for it, and we don't need to go out and borrow or add more to the tax rate. <laughs> yeah, I, I got a I got kind of question. I, I was reading a lot of these documents, and one of it is is the town you know living above its means as far as free cash is concerned. Because you can get free cash in from from um, from revenues, and then obviously fund these budgets. But in the meantime, you're still increasing tax rate to do that. No. So, <coughs> well, free cash is what you get out of the operations or, uh, or revenues that you didn't you didn't spend. Right. So you can keep raising that, not spending it, and then taking it and putting it into capital. So, so the question is: is if we want to keep the, the tax base low? Obviously, if it was lower, then we wouldn't have this free cash, which means we couldn't fund these capital expenses. So in other words, are we living within our means, or every time we need more capital, we just raise the revenue? You, you, we got, you we got carry, parts two and, two and a half, right? Yeah. yeah but well, we can make exceptions to that, right? $325 of what we can raise at, off the tax rate right now, right? That's all, we all, we're, we're within that $3,300 tax limit, the maximum we could tax people, and unless, the, unless and they do the overrides. Exclusions, the exclusions and, 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 and things like that. So what I looked, I looked at the, say, free cash that we had, the, the max at 7% and then stabilization fund, and if I maxed both out to the high ends, I came up with like 4.5 million, and we had a, a, a surplus a excess of about 6 million. So we should be able to use the max and still have 1.5 million approximately for free cash still available. In other words, we shouldn't deplete the whole thing, even if we maxed out on to our own policy, the free cash and the stabilization fund. You know what I'm saying? You know what happens then? The people who have a more attractive rate now have to pay more in the capital markets because our bond rating is lessened. It's as broad as it is long. They're going to pay either way. Either they're going to pay more in interest to attract capital markets, or they're going to get the money back and then they won't be able to keep it because it's going to go right back out. Because we will not then be a double A plus outlook of stable. We'll be less attractive. Another way to look at it is another thing, and I'll be because I'm, I'm kind of look, doing this in this good discussion, is the, the debt ratio we have is great, 4%. And, and the, the agencies, what I read, they use 10%. Anything less than 10% is good. I know this doesn't affect your triple, or double A plus rating. So if we're at 4%, we have, you know, say conservatively another 4% borrowing power to utilize and still keep our rating at double A plus. So do we, do we borrow? Do we borrow, or do we use free cash? Or I mean, there's a there's a little balance here of where this money's come right. from and how to get switched around. Okay, let let's say that that's just fine. Then what happens the next day? Now we don't have the money. Now we're really on thin ice. And it took a while to get up to six million. Six million is artificial. It was never our. It's not even in our policy to be that high. It's, it's a way above what we said we were supposed to be. So, so, so Larry, we just heard the finance director say more is better, They're, and that they want to readjust the policy. But unless you're a taxpayer, then more is not better because it's your money that you're using. Unless we all vote, no, saying, no, Let's you're take missing. The you're missing the central point. If they get the money back in that they have a lower tax rate then down comes the bond rating, up goes the interest we have to pay from the taxpayer to withdraw any money on a borrowing. I don't think it's going to affect the bond rating. Well, how long have you worked for Standard & Poor's? No, what, what, I, what, well, what our policy said was 3 to, say, 7 percent, and supposing we're at 10 percent free cash. Well, our, our bond rating in what we initially planned for was three or max seven percent. We're way above that. The most important thing is probably debt ratio of four percent versus if we were if our debt ratio was twelve, then you're right, the bond rating would go down. I don't quite frankly know the difference between free cash being excessive, overly excessive, 
versus debt being 4%, which is fantastic. I don't know where the whole balance is, to be honest. I don't know. And, I, and we could find out. But so, wait, wait, can, hang can on. I speak? Go ahead, Barbara. I know you wanted to make a comment. Track here. So first of all, I think that um, this is probably the second or the third meeting where I think there's been a lot of confusion about free cash. And so and there's there's a couple of things. First of all, there there's a there's a document which you probably get. It's called City and Town. And it comes out, I don't know, a couple times a month sometimes, sometimes once a month. There have been numerous articles in that bulletin regarding how, you know, municipalities had higher than ever levels of free cash as a result of COVID. And so part of the issue is when we were in the midst of a pandemic, nobody knew what was going to happen with anything, with revenues, you know, how long were we going to be shut down? And so Sturbridge has always been very conservative with budgeting revenues, which in my opinion is a good thing because if you are too aggressive on budgeting revenues and you don't meet those revenue thresholds, then you create, you know, uh, a revenue deficit. And so during COVID, you know, we didn't know what was going to happen with meals tax, room occupancy tax, excise tax, mm -hmm. investment income had tanked. All of those things, we lowered those numbers to try to reflect and do what was basically being discussed in every municipality in the Commonwealth of, you know, making assumptions based on what was happening. And so a lot of those assumptions did not come to be. One was meals tax. Um, we were very lucky in Sturbridge that our meals tax remained pretty close to the level that it had been at in prior years. Um, another area that was blown out of the water is if you look at if you look at the revenue um, projections in your spiral book normally building inspect building fees are usually in the hundred thousand dollar range building fees were over three hundred thousand dollars again as a result of covid so there were a lot of revenue numbers that came in higher and you know higher than what we budgeted so you know, conservatively budgeting revenues is a good thing. That doesn't mean that we're overtaxing people. That means that our philosophy in Sturbridge for almost 30 years that I've been here is that we budget conservatively. The other area is unspent budgets. And so we have considerably over the past several years had an issue with um, positions not being able to be filled uh, at the staffing levels in our police department, in our fire department. Those are high paid positions that have resulted in large balances being remaining at the end of the year. That doesn't mean we overtaxed people. That means that you know we had vacancies and so those budgets close out. We also have uh, a policy in town that we don't want departments to just spend money to spend money so that as we get to the months of May and June, that if they have extra money in their budget because some of their expenditures came in lower, we ask them to just turn the, get the money to turn back over and close out into free cash. That's a good policy to have as opposed to saying, to everyone, well, you know what? We gave you X number of dollars, go ahead and spend it. So that helps free cash balance. The third component of free cash is, you know, I run a tight ship. When, that, when we have projects that are funded and those projects are done, we immediately close the money out back into it becomes a designated fund balance and, and results in the free cash number. So by doing all of those things, um, you know, we have healthy balances. Now, as far as the percentages that you're reading in the policies, those percentages are where we want to be. But what you have to remember, and I feel like what everyone is losing sight of, 
is when we take that six million dollars that I, you know, Mike asked at the beginning of the meeting, what's the free cash number? Let's see what that number is after we spend all the money in all these articles. Because what you need to keep in mind is if we were only generating 3% to 7%, which is the numbers you guys are referencing in free cash every year, that would mean that there is zero money available to appropriate. And we have, again, in 30 years, or as long as I can remember, we have always funded the capital plan of the town with free cash. It's never been a raise and appropriate article. We've been very lucky over the years to have, you know, the free cash number, and I, I didn't provide it to you this year. There's been years when I've put it in the spiral book, but the free cash number has been all over the place. You know, lows, highs, the 6 million is the highest. We've been right around 4 million for a few years. But we don't close the year at $4 because, again, we're appropriating money for different things. When we go to special town meeting in the winter or, or the fall, once the tax rate is set, the only money we have available is, uh, is our free cash to appropriate from. So I think the bottom line is there, there needs to be a discussion, which I would be so happy to have, of you know, what really is the intention of free cash? What number, what percentage are we looking to have available to us? But but also, you know, a discussion of when you get a number at the beginning of the year, knowing realistically, you know, how much money do we historically spend to reduce that number during the course of the year? And what do we actually end with? And then what percentage are we at based on that? you know, after expenditures happen. So it's just not as simple as just looking at a number, a snapshot of a number on Ju on July 1st, and then basing everything around that. And I know that's a longer explanation than you probably all needed or wanted, but I just think there's definitely a, um, a disconnect um, on that free cash number. Hey, Barbara, um, I, one, one thing here, maybe you know the answer to this. Easy. I was going to back, I was going to make a comment about how in the, in the combined <coughs> meeting we talked about is, you know, the six or seven capital projects we know that are out there that are all, you know, a million dollars or less. And one of the ones was the, the fuel tank possible replacement down at the town garage. Mm -hmm. I don't see a, a put, you know, a, what do you call it, a holding article? For that, does that mean we don't have an issue down there. Um, I actually, as we were as we we're meeting tonight, I actually got a uh, a message from Butch that they're actually they're going to be get, we're going to have an answer on that um, next week. Okay. So that could potentially still, depending on the result of that, what happens next week, that may or may not um, be necessary. And so hopefully by Thursday, I'll have an answer to that. And I want to say that was what four hundred fifty thousand to six hundred thousand dollars. The rough. Estimate I think it was that. four. I, my recollection is four fifty, Kevin. Okay, so that's four hundred and fifty thousand dollars. We're going to have to spend if that tank is leaking. Mm -hmm. we, and that's where Barbara's going. That's four hundred fifty thousand coming right out of free cash. That's going to lower that balance quickly. And we don't have to go to the taxpayer saying, "Hey, we need a prop two and a half override to pay for this," because we have to take care of this leaking tank now. We, you know, that's, there's, there's pros and cons to all this stuff, and mostly it's a pro to have the money. Right, right. So, so back to Larry's, you know, question that he posed, is, is having a lot of free cash good? If you're a rating agency, yeah, they got a, they got a big savings account and can absorb some, some big things down the road, the, that's a good thing. If you're a finance director and a, or a treasurer in a town, having that big, um, unallocated fund the money to, to, to cover some of these unexpected things that come down down the road and kind of you know smooth out the, the future unknown things that come at you it, it's a good thing um, if, if we get to free cash uh, like Barbara said because we were conservative on our revenues which doesn't impact how much we raise and appropriate and how we set the budgets and we've got growth coming into the town so we got more 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 people coming in, more taxes uh, being assessed at, at you know tax rates than, than were planned in there. Th that's a good reason for, for generating that excess cash in this year that kind of goes into free cash. If, 
if you get to the point of we're just raising and appropriating to the max that we can and uh, we're not really spending the money that was kind of set aside in that budget and raised and appropriated because we're going to use that as a mechanism to fund this free cash balance and keep running it up and, or use it for something else down the road, then that's where I think Ken was going and I'm kind of there as well. That's probably not a, a good way to generate free cash. But some of the other, and, and I'm not saying that's what we're doing or, or we're, 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 you know, the way we're running in town is is you know, ask for a lot. We're, we're, Barbara's not going to let you spend it. Uh, she and we're going to turn it into free cash to build the thing. Well, I'm not saying we're doing that, but if if that's where a lot of that source was coming from, that's probably a little problematic. We we could raise an appropriate a little bit less to people, and um, still keep our free cash balance with within the guidelines. But I think a good discussion well, for, for this committee would be if, if the if it is three to seven percent. And we think a higher level of free cash and, and, and that policy sh should be changed so that we have a higher level of free cash. That, that's, a, that's a good conversation for, for this committee to, to engage in uh, to, to help kind of shape what we think the, the, the right policy should be and whether we should change our existing one. Well, I have also provided to the Finance Committee every year breakdown of how what went into the free cash balance. and. Like I said, I don't have that in front of me tonight, but a lot of the turnover is from departments that have turnovers in staffing. And again, that's through no fault of anyone other than that's what happens in the course of a year. Um, I mean, the I feel that, you know, our our operating budgets are, you know, are what need what departments need. Um, you know, you have to realize that when we start the, you know, we start the budgeting process in November, December for something that, you know, we don't start spending the money till July. So it's, you know, it's based on what we feel the budget's going to be at estimates that departments get for increases in different lines. My point regarding not spending, it's not about Barbara not allowing people to spend. It's the message of that I don't want any department feeling ever that if they have excess funds because they budgeted, you know, $10,000 for something and it came in at nine, that they feel the need to spend the extra $1,000 in this example because then if they don't, next year they're not going to get the money. That's never been my philosophy. My philosophy is not to, you know, spend it or lose it going forward. My philosophy is, you know, provide the best numbers that of what you think is needed. And, you know, I think if you look at the year to year on each department, I mean, you can see that uh, the, the majority of those expenses go up very little line item to line item. So uh, there is definitely nothing being, you know, cushioned or over budgeted to build up free cash. Um, again, I believe that the past fiscal year was an anomaly based on COVID. It is no different than any other community. And if I can find the city and town that had that article about the free cash and what I happened. I believe I sent that out to everybody. Yeah. You did? Okay, yeah. perfect. So, you know, again, I, you know, I, I just don't want the wrong message going out, which, you know, like I said, it's, it's not about us attempting to build up a balance, but it's also having strong financial policies. And we have weathered many a storm in Sturbridge when other communities were falling apart, laying people off, eliminating positions. And, and we have not had to do that because we've had strong financial policies, strong, re strong reserves. And like I said, we've weathered a lot. And I just want to make sure that, you know, for years to come, the town is in a good place. And I mean, I can tell you that the budget that's put together for fiscal 23, I was definitely more aggressive on revenues than I have been in the past. I still think we're okay. But, um, you know, as you can see, and as Kevin pointed out earlier, 
you know, we have excess levy capacity of $3,325, I believe. And that's not a lot of money. And if you look at the revenue projections for the next three years, you can see that, you know, we're going to be in a position where things are going to be tight. We, as I highlighted at the joint meeting, we still were not able this year to put our reserve balances for fire trucks and the ambulance and, um, capital stabilization at back to the level, road, the roads budget back to the levels they were, um, you know, pre COVID. And those are all decisions that the town needs to make coming down the road. I mean, my job is to, you know, sift through the budgets that are submitted, work with the town administrator. Ultimately it's the town administrator's um, budget that moves forward to you all. You also spend a lot of time and have over the course of many years that I've been involved with you all of looking at each line. And I, I just feel like, you know, the budgets are what we need to operate and anything that is left over at the end of the year can clearly be explained as to why it happened. Bobby, you wanted to make a comment? Uh, the more points Barbara made, the more things <laughs> um, first of all, I couldn't agree more with the points you made about not penalizing. Bob, nobody can hear you at home, oh, <laughs> including me. <laughs> well, that could be a good thing. <laughs> uh, I was just going to say I couldn't agree more about her last point and not penalizing or cutting budgets at the end of the year for unspent balances. I mean, in my experience, and Barbara pointed this out, that just promotes a year-end spending frenzy and just bad financial practices. I think no doubt you're in an enviable position with free cash. But I think any kind of discussion on expenditures or free cash has to be in a larger context of a budget plan. Barbara has presented a plan that shows the operating budget in the red in a couple of years. My other concern is capital. I mean, you basically have a one-year capital plan. And I think there's an awful lot coming down the road that isn't being paid attention to and needs to be, when you look at spending free cash, you need to know the larger picture. I mean, she pointed out capital items, fire trucks, roads. You've got a, you've funded a study of upgrade of your radios. I mean, that's up to four and a half million now to implement that. If we have sprinklers and ADA improvements at the library, that's over a million dollars. There's your free cash right there. Other communities have different methods to fund free cash. They might take it, they might borrow, they might use debt exclusions. I mean, I think one of those avenues may be very well be out for you. Are you going to get another debt exclusion after just passing $11 million for a senior center? So I think there's an awful lot that comes into here when you are discussing any expenditure of free cash. I had talked to the selectmen about putting a bylaw on for a capital plan. I think you, you desperately need a long-term capital plan. Uh, Barbara and I have talked about perhaps rather than a bylaw, putting it into the selectmen's financial policies. I, either way, I think it's necessary to have it. But my whole point is I just, I just think you need to look at this in a larger context and look at what's coming down the road and have a long-term plan before you make any decisions about, about your free cash because once it's gone, it's going to be incredibly difficult to get it back. Isn't, isn't the planning process of one-year operating budget and a five-year planning, isn't that five-year planning supposed to be a little visionary like fire department, police department? What do you see yourself in five years? What do you need in five years? Isn't it more like let's take the day-to-day -day operations out, out of the equation. We've got to pay the bills today. We've got to do this today. But let's just dream for a while. What do you, what do you think you're going to be in five years? I think I'm going to need like... Right. Space, space stage, a fire, fire station with whatever, the Jetsons, I, for $20 million. You know. I think you're right on. I think after a couple of years, the, your, your operating five-year plan does become visionary. I mean, look what happened with COVID. You know, what, what could happen with state aid? There, we've seen over the years any number of things could cause that plan to fluctuate or, or be almost useless. But I think a capital plan is different. I think a capital plan is much more reliable. If you have a good planning process, if you have departments that pay attention to it and are diligent about giving you the right information, I think a five-year capital plan becomes a very reliable instrument and helps the town tremendously in figuring out how you're going to finance it. A, it's a rolling plan, so you keep every five, the next five years, you're going to see what you were, the next year you were good at. You exactly. That's the plan, and so well, I was wrong here. But yeah, that, that's the intent. You're doing that. Cross that off, put that back on, and it's a rolling thing. But we have the, we have the system to do it. It's a great system. 
I, I like that. You know, one-year operation feet to the fire, you know, stay within the budget. Year, year f f two and, and to six, whatever, is let's be a little bit more. What, what, are, the, what are the needs? What are the futures? What do we, what do we think? And nobody's going to be stuck to, with the numbers or the plan, but as a visionary, at least give an idea of what we think we're going to need for planning. Yes. Well, the stabilization accounts are a form of capital planning. Mm -hmm. We do for ambulance and fire apparatus. We set aside money every year. Mm -hmm. For instance, the ambulance is around a seven-year schedule. So we set aside 30000 or whatever it's a year, so that at the end of seven years, we've set aside usually sufficient money. Now, I'm not saying that's a full capital plan, but it's, it's a form of capital planning. Mm -hmm. We're talking about doing that with fire trucks and ambulances, but we have to do it on a broader scale. Well, I, I agree, but I think what I'm hearing is you haven't been able to put the money in there that you want no, to. Haven't. Right. And I keep hearing the expression free cash, and I'm sorry, but it just rubs me the wrong way. Not I, free. It's cash reserves. Cash is never free. Mm. That's, that's just a misnomer. I hate that. It's, it's called a number of different things. Some towns call it available funds. Some towns cash. call it different Capital things. Reserves, but cash reserves. <laughs> Banks call it cash reserves mm -hmm. when, they're, when they're trying to lend you money, as Larry was talking about yeah. program ratings. Right. Financial institutions ask you what your cash reserves are, and it influences what you're going to get from borrowing rate. Somehow there's a connotation there with being free that, well, there's no penalty or downside to spending right. it, but there certainly is. Yeah. It's never free. Kevin? So, Bob, while I hear you, and, and, and I agree with you on, on, on what you're talking about there, I am a little confused because we do have five-year capital plan. It's, it's in our book. We get it every year where, where that committee is not just bringing us what do we need this year, but they, they are looking long term as to things that could be coming our way. I know we, we've talked about the senior center, we've talked about rec fields, we've talked about you know, new DPW barns, some of those larger things. So I, the, as I look at this plan, it, 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 there is a five-year plan in here. Uh, we don't really know what we're going to spend in year two or three. We have an idea as to what the priorities are today and next year when they put it together. <laughs> You know, they'll figure out what next year's priorities are and how much money we have available to spend for that. So that, that's where I kind of get a little confused as to what should we be doing differently because it feels like we already have the elements of that in place right now. Uh, yes, there's a form of five five year plan, but it's only a form. I think that there's a lot of work that could be done to, um, I mean, for example, you've got and not, no criticism here and they put a lot of time into it, but you basically got to capital committee made up of department heads, which you're not going to see in other towns. I think that if you have a good capital committee, they're going to really root out all the items that are out there. I'm not sure that the diligence has really gone into, you know, really exploring and capturing everything that needs to be captured in your five-year plan. Um, I mean, we've just seen things fluctuate. The library, for example, just, you know, for the longest time, and even while the capital <laughs> committee was making a decision on funding it, it was one number and then all of a sudden it doubled i mean these are things you need to avoid and, and and i don't think it really speaks that well to your capital plan capital plan you have to figure out what you need and then you have to figure out how you're going to fund it and what the methods are going to be to have the money available when the time comes to make the expenditures yeah exactly and that's what we're missing and there's, there's a lot of work that goes in ahead of time before you're making the decision to really refine that number whether you have your studies done and you you know you, you have your meetings with departments and there if there's something that's five years out well then you've got five years to prepare for it and make sure that the number that's being presented is is a firm number okay any other questions or comments I just had a question for Barbara on this because we were talking okay. about this. I need that mic. Yeah. Oh, did you? Just on the, uh, it says, to, to Joe's point, we're talking about uh, this uh, expenditure of $745,000, $746,000. But that's going to, Barbara, that's, gonna, that's going to deplete the ambulance fund. It takes which, it down which, to $30,000. Right. In the ambulance fund, it tells you. I think it's going to take it down yeah. to zero, and then we're going to put 30 more in this year. But maybe Barbara can right. answer that and, question. Yeah, no, I think that's right. And and just to the point of the ambulance stabilization fund is we are not funding. We would like to fund it at the level that we have enough money at the, when we get to the seventh year to be able to just take all the money out of capital, stabiliz, uh, ambulance stabilization. We, we are not at that point. The last several ambulances that we have 
ambulances that we have purchased, we have had to supplement the purchase with free cash as opposed to just having all the money set aside. So I had calculated that we should be putting away about $70,000 a year um, towards that purchase. And in next year's budget, we're putting away 30 right. because that's, that's what we could afford for starting to rebuild our reserves. Pre-COVID, I believe we were at 60 and last, that wasn't quite last year we did either. 30. We did 30 last year as well. Yeah. Yeah, but she's right. We were at 60 for a while. Yeah. 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 And it's a seven year cycle from what I saw. So, but that inflated the number for this year, Joe. That's what I was getting at that with. That's 750 this year was only 550 last year. The ambulance expenditure with 225,000 of it came out of that reserve fund. That's what pumped that number up this year. So high. Okay. But I need a motion, uh, you know, someone to approve, recommend approving Article 17 to capital approval here and as written. So moved. Do I have a second? Any further questions or comments? So, Kevin, we can uh, vote on this with the understanding we'll change the, def the summary. That doesn't. Yeah, I have it highlighted. And I, I mean, usually I. Larry will help me, Ward Smith and all that, and we'll send it out so everyone gets a chance to review it and get it before it goes to the printer because, you know, everything except for this set section, you know, in the middle belongs to us. And so we can change pretty much anything except the actual verbing from to see through take any action in relative there too. Alrighty, so I have a first and a second. Any further comments? All those in favor? At seven to nothing. Thank you, Barbara. So, so along Joe's lines, I think uh, we should, should probably in that one talk about the um, balance in the stabiliza ambulance stabilization fund prior to that article being approved, and then in well, we'll wait till we get to the next article. Okay. We could we could make a point to say that you know we're trans transferring funds. I, mean, I think it's in the actual article body of the article, though, right? Yeah, we're, we're moving it, it. What what the article says is we're moving. We're transferring appropriating two hundred twenty three thousand dollars from the ambulance sta stabilization fund. Mm -hmm. What it doesn't say is how much is in the fund. Are you are you taking it to zero or not? So that, taking that's, it to nine hundred and twenty dollars. Right. So, so so I think that that being a Okay. appropriate thing to add in the summary and then when we get to the next one article 18 we say if, if this thirty thousand dollars thing is approved it goes up to thirty thousand nine twenty well it goes up there assuming that the prior article had passed <laughs> yeah. i think that makes sense mike all right Nine well i think you could just put if the capital budget is approved because it says if approved the balance will be <coughs> If both the capital and that are approved, you'd have the 30. Right. Yep, so we'll, we'll, we'll just kind of yeah. fix that up, Kevin and I, yep, yeah. and then pass it around for others to see. Okay, so we have just finished 17. Article 18 is the Ambulance Stabilization Fund. The other one. So as we know, that is lower than it has been historically, but that was part of the COVID cuts more than anything. So. A little side conversation, yeah. So we're taking 223 out of the station account. Okay, got it. So this, this is... About a motion? Is yeah. How about a pet so moved? Okay. Move to that we recommend to town meeting. Yeah, yeah. Kathy, Kathy yeah. goes with the approvers written. Do okay. I have a second? This is for 18. 18, yes. Yeah. Yeah, well, second. Second, Jeff. I'm Jeff. <laughs> Whatever. It's <laughs> Joe. Uh, may I be recognized? Yes, go ahead, Larry. The um, article 17 says 375,000 for the uh, amp, uh, article 17 says 375,000 for the ambulance. Then article 18 uh, it says 
if approved, the stable will be um, 300, the town will purchase at 375. Well, what, what, what can happen is 17 can fail, 18 can pass. Eight, 17 you can pass and 18 can fail. Now what? In either case. I, I can easily see somebody saying, "What? I just thought a minute ago I voted for 375000 on Article 17. Now you're telling me I have to vote it again? I, I Are think, there two ambulances I, 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 you know that the price where? double for one? No, the ambulance is $598,000. Three hundred and seventy five of which is coming from this as you know capital and then another two hundred and twenty three thousand. Yeah, that I don't think that's crystal clear. It no, sure isn't. No, no, uh, no. Oh, I thought it was three seventy five. No. The, the ambulance is three seventy five. Yes. Which is which is part of a seven hundred and forty five thousand dollar capital plan. So we're we're taking uh, I got we're, it right. I'm reading the numbers wrong, yep. So so we're 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 Spending, we're asking for authorization to spend um, five hundred and twenty-three thousand dollars in free cash, plus two hundred and thirty-three thousand dollars, two hundred twenty-three thousand dollars from the ambulance fund to fund a bunch of uh, uh, items. The ambulance. So if you read that, the ambulance is three seventy-five. Yeah. So we're paying the three seventy-five using two twenty-three from the stabilization funds plus an extra hundred something of that money from free cash. And then the remaining free cash money goes to fund the other items on that list. And then you get to Article 18. Then you get yes. to Article 18 that says we, we're, we set aside money to buy that. Now we're, we're start setting aside a little bit of money back into that stabilization fund for the ambulance we're going to buy five years from now. And it does not say that here. Can I make a comment? Like the last, just one, uh, okay. 10 seconds, please, uh, Jim. And the last two sentences are not sentences. People, there's, it, <laughs> It, it, it's yes. nonsense. Well, yep. Okay. Yeah. I, I, I got some things highlighted as well. So I, I understand your point that we need to yeah. clean that up a little bit well, and make clean it, it up and, a lot of bit. <laughs> so maybe Kevin and I will work on that and, and share it with the with the committee. Thank you, Jim. No, I was just going to make a comment that uh, probably the last two sentences or the last three sentences aren't even necessary in that box. Each year, the town sets aside a sum of money to assist and placing the ambulances on a seven-year schedule, period, end of discussion. The rest of it's just informational that causes confusion, but it doesn't contribute anything to the article. Well, well It's been resolved in the article before it. Well, well, if anyone's paying attention, they already know we spent the money. But we put that in there before, so if we weren't spending it. We kind of let people know, you know, you're putting 30000 in. You, you know, here's how much you got left in that fund for and the future. It just caused confusion here. If it confuses us, and we know what we're doing. Imagine what it's going to do to I think if we clean, people. move some things around and kind of tie the two together, and, and you know, well, it, it'll be clear. No, I consider a fair point. And it wouldn't hurt if the chair would consider briefing the moderator, because he often will say, Look at Article X. Yep. Think about Article Y, because if X doesn't <coughs> pass, we'll skip Y, et cetera. We wouldn't skip in this case, but I mean, I guess we could make the relationship. I'm trying to get across the point that the moderator, if briefed, will sometimes guide. Oh, hmm. He's not pushing any voter in any direction. He's just telling them what the landscape is. Hmm. I'm just, all right, I have a first and a second for Article 18. Oh, you have a comment? I just, uh, with the condition that this is going to be cleaned up with a discussion between you and Mike to get the language. Well, yeah, the, no, the boxes belong to us. Yeah, we'll okay. clear that up, try and make it clear it up. So, Drink money to the tax base. Base. No. So, all those in favor? That's a Seven political enough. statement. That's fine if the selectmen do it. From Next one. Standpoint. Not pleasing voters. Um, so we're adding 188. Really? Yeah. One half of 1%. Yeah. Uh, I'll give a shake. Proletariat class. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> it 
as for the to kill, I think they should park on your street. All right, I, I just was reading the explanation. All right, so Article 19, capital stabilization. So, so in, in light of this discussion this evening, huh? um, so it's pretty clear our, our policy is to put aside a half a percent of the operating budget. So this number is probably in line with what we've done in past years, right? And uh, you know we're running this this budget uh, this uh, account up to a million dollar balance. What it doesn't tell me is what your where you're going to use this. What's coming down the road? And yet I go back to um, you know Article uh, 17, the capital plan, and and Joe's comment of. Uh, Hey, you know, you've, you've got a backhoe in there that's $200,000, which, uh, you know, it exceeds the $100,000 policy, probably should be short-term borrowing or something else. So it, it kind of goes back to we're building up a million-dollar balance for something in the future we don't know quite yet, and, and yet we're making a $200,000 equipment purchase. Shouldn't we be, be taking funds out of here versus using free cash and leave the free cash for something else? Hmm. Kind of definition, huh? So, Barbara, I don't have an answer for that one. I because I don't know if you do either. What, what is? I know it was kind of we were building a war chest with something in mind, but I don't recall what it was. No, I don't think there's any specific purpose, but that's what the policy say. So we we've started to put the money aside based on our policies. I mean, at any point in time, we could start spending, but I mean, again, there's a lot of things coming down the road that I'm sure this account's gonna have to be tapped into, but I mean, yeah, could we have taken the, you know, the 500 and whatever thousand out of this account and, and brought it down to 500 versus a million, a million 36,000? Sure, but I mean, I think that, you know, again with the balance of free cash of uh, you know six million dollars it made sense to continue the practice that we've got we've done in the past the stabilization funds all the interest stays with the fund and is able to be utilized so but yeah those are all decisions that you know are half are going to have to um be discussed and, you know, I've always felt, and Kevin and I have had this conversation, and Kathy and I have had this conversation uh, in the recent years of, you know, there are a lot of financial decisions that the discussion should happen throughout the year as opposed to, you know, only during budget season. That's always been my um, my thoughts. And so I would love to have these conversations you know, not today, but, uh, you know, long-term discussions about what is the intent of this, of this account? What do we want the balance to be, um, you know, raised to before we start drawing from it? Uh, you know, do we want to change our financial policies? Again, that was something I mentioned to you guys at the beginning of the meeting. The policies haven't been updated since, I think, 2017. Uh, you know, I think it's time to look at them again. And now that we've started developing all these different um, stabilization funds, but we also know, for instance, I mean, we have, you know, $57,000 in a fire stabilization fund, which isn't going to buy us anything. So I think if you look at the, if you look at the five-year capital plan, I think in the fire department, a, a fire truck is coming up um soon i want to say i don't know if it's next year or the I year after year. um yeah next year fiscal 24 seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars to re replace uh rescue one so again those are discussions that need to happen and to bob's point those are discussions that should happen before you get that you're right on top of having to make the decision so we can plan accordingly so 
uh, let's all plan to sit down after town meeting or after the summer and start having these discussions so that we have a plan in place for next year's budget season. So Barbara, I know what I had in my head when I was thinking that we were something in here, you know, with a target, and that was the, the landfill capping. And I know that you were, I know there's some type of study going on right now related to how long we can have the, the landfill remain open and then what it's going to cost to cap it. Do we have those numbers yet? Because I know when we discussed it many years ago, the landfill capping number was a million dollars. And it, I could imagine it's only gone up since then. So I have not seen the study in very, a very brief conversation that I had with the um, health agent. Uh, there were su some suggestions that came out of the study to um, expand the life of the landfill. Um, I had asked, so I believe there was a presentation being made to the Board of Health within the past 30 days, probably. Um, and I had asked at some point that once, you know, the Board of Health had discussed it and that the study was available, um, that the Finance Committee be included because that that is a big discussion that also has to be talked about um, with, you know, stakeholders because we have been, again, probably for 30 years, setting aside all the all the income that is collected at the recycling center we've been putting a, putting the money aside into a landfill closure account and so my interest in this study was you know one what's how many more years do we have on the landfill mm -hmm. two what is the estimated cost because i feel like that one million dollar number was a number that was thrown out like 20 years ago so obviously a million dollars 20 years ago isn't a million dollars today right. but you know uh, you know again i'm not for just you know in this case setting aside a, uh, a bunch of money to close the landfill like it, it would be nice if we had which this study is supposed to determine what is the estimated cost for capping the landfill when are we looking to do that so that we can determine you know, okay, based on the amount of money we're setting aside every year, where is where are we going to be with that? So, um, there's there's a few of those situations, but uh, Ken was very open to sharing all that information um, with with the finance committee and others, um, including myself and the town administrator. And um, so, I think you know that's a discussion that will be coming soon, and I will make sure that that you guys are are involved in it. I mean, Ken and I have also talked about, you know, something that's been talked about for years, which is, you know, the amount of money generated versus the costs of, you know, the recycling center and all those different type of things. And we have the pay as you throw revolving account. And I want to have a serious discussion about that too in the upcoming year. So um, again, these are these are things that need to happen year round, these discussions, not just you know, during budget season when we're reviewing the war articles. The, sta the stabilization fund, how do you, how do you appropriate that from, from, cause a week from last Tuesday, I guess, when we had, we were sitting down and they, they had the board meeting, someone came in with a sewer maintenance and I, I guess something went wrong. I guess a, a piece of the equipment broke down and we, it was anywhere from 50,000 to 200,000. I forget what the number was. We were still looking, investigating it. And out of the stabilization fund, do they have to go to the, the board to, to access that money? Or is it money that just it's there? And uh, I mean, how is it allocated out and who gets it? Stabilization money can only be appropriated at town meeting by a two thirds vote of the legislative body. Okay. Well, maybe you could explain. Um, Thank you. The, the, the specifically, was talking about is in the water and sewer budgets. Part of the rates that come in are used to create some balances for for equipment pairs and operations that go on, and that's where that money. Oh, I'm sorry. Out. I thought. I thought he said stabilization. He, he mentioned. Fund. Sta he, he did talk about stabilization, but then kind of got to the 
specifics and no water reason I'm saying sort of it's stabilization fund is because it's used for maintenance of equipment and replacement of facilities and it didn't seem like when they came to the meeting there was, there was money there to access or maybe there was money there oh, no that was a different stabilization fund inside of each of those special revenue funds water mm -hmm. and sewer they have their own stabilization funds they, they still have to go to the board well, and get approval for it it's not a stabilization yeah, right. fund it's, it's a uh, fund balance but uh, are you talking about um are you talking the presentation that Ty and Bond gave, or yeah, are you yes. talking about repairs to a screen at the sewer department? I was talking about the repair of the screen, the, the one that was a, estimated to be $50,000 plus, and it was it just unfortunate things happened. It was maintained, but it just broke down. Yeah, so we had to, that actually, we're still waiting for a cost on the repair. So I don't know what that cost is, but when when there's issues, when there's capital issues in the water and sewer department, you'll see. Uh, so so we carry. If you look at the water and sewer budgets, you'll see that there's a capital line, and there is a miscellaneous line, and those are you know the capital line is the things, the smaller type of capital needs that they know they're going to have during the course of the year. Um, if we're going to appropriate money out of the fund balances, those need to be more articles and voted at an annual or special town meeting. Um, the the fund balances, while they're still, you know, they're still good numbers, the sewer fund balance um, has been being used for the past, I think it's five or six years to stabilize the sewer rate. So we kind of, we drew that that balance down to below a million dollars. Um, but again, the water and sewer fund balance is another area that is gonna need to be addressed in the, the financial policies because there's no specific policy regarding where we want those fund balances to be. Uh, we've always said right around a million dollars um, but there's really, that's just a number. It's, it's not, you know, a percentage of the budget or what specifically want to do. So again, that's another, uh, another thing that I, I, I want to, in the coming year, you know, move, move into the policies, but, um, it's very specific when it comes to capital needs and town meeting is the one that has to, uh, appropriate that money. The, the disadvantage of the water and sewer, and we've been lucky that we've never had to cross this bridge, but I mean, there's a real possibility at some point in time, we'll get to the, the situation where there's a capital need at the water sewer department that needs to be addressed immediately. And the only option is a reserve fund transfer, even though, you know, the reserve fund transfer isn't really for water or sewer, but that, that's something that could come up down the road because unforeseen emergency only option for money. Kevin, Larry. in the uh, Article 19 summary box, I suggest putting a zero to the left of the decimal point. Somebody reading that may jump over the decimal point and think it's 5%. I think the format ordinarily would be zero point five percent sign Thank you. so Kevin since I kicked off that discussion I think I, I'd, I'd like Barbara's suggestion and I think that's where we as a committee you know can, can really add the value here is it's not just sitting here at had the town meeting reviewing articles yeah that looks good and recommended town meeting but it's really looking at the bigger picture what's the longer term planning making sure we're using funding these articles from the right sources there you know and, and Bob's discussion about the five-year plan and stuff you know having a better sense of what's in there and 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 kind of talking them through understanding what's coming and figuring out do, do we want to run this balance up to two million dollars because there's something coming in four years and, and we want to draw from that or you know don't really see any need for it in the near term in which case you know probably would change the funding between you know the prior article and this one to maybe take something out of here versus free cash and that's that's where those 
ongoing discussions and, and better yeah, sense of the b big old picture. And follow. I wrote that down as here as a topic for the Board of the Finance Committee. Yeah. Maybe it's something we, because we have had these discussions with the Board of Selectmen in the past, and you know, and in, in they operate differently. You know, their their horizons are shorter. Mm -hmm. Usually, you know, three year terms. They're looking top at most, and um, you know, so. Okay. So I agree that this is consistent with the policy and we would want to fund it. I guess my question is, you know, is, is there some near term, you know, pe people might sit here and say, you got a million dollars in a bank, what are we going to do with it? Uh, we don't have any specific plans and so forth. We have a list. We have a, I mean, I, I keep going back to the same notes I had from that Saturday meeting. There's seven, eight, nine things we know, you know, that radio, the gas, possible gas tank replacement. Um, I have to go back to my list here, but, you know, this is, we, got, we know the senior center's coming online, but that's not related to this. EPW, which has been on the list for well, yeah, that's, 100 years. Yeah, yeah, it's been on for a long, long time. Uh -huh. And a $5 million radio program, we can pay for it from free cash is great, but that might be the level of expenditure says we need some type of borrowing for maybe a short period versus long period and, and use this to fund a lot of the smaller items uh, of a couple hundred thousand apiece that are on that list. That, you know, we still need to do while we're, we're trying to make that major investment on the radios. And you know, one of the things we've historically done with these type of funding mechanisms is these are really meant for capital. They're not meant for ongoing operations. And so one of the things I'm concerned about is that safe for grant. That's one of the things I had written down as the thing. You know, in three years from now, if we get that and we were hiring three more firefighters, which I'm not saying we don't need because, you know, the numbers say we do, what are you going to pay for that if our revenues aren't going to be there to, to cover with known costs that are coming? And I mean, we don't want to use things like stabilization funds or un un unallocated fund balance, which is my favorite term for free cash, is that, um, you know, to pay for those type of ongoing operations. But so. So, I was hoping to get to Article 23 tonight. That was my goal. So uh, can I just point something out? Oh yeah, I'm sorry. I continue I'm on these going off on these tangents. Article 30 is called Capital Planning Bylaw, and it delineates all the stuff we've been talking about tonight, as far as setting up a bylaw with this committee, with rotating members and different people represented to do exactly what we're talking about going forward. So maybe we can just uh, take it up there. Take it up yep. there. I'm happy to move along. I'll make a motion that um, the Finance Committee recommend that the uh, town vote to approve Article 19 as written. <coughs> All right. Hang on. I'm on the wrong page here. I'll second that. No, I already got a second. Yeah, Jump in. Okay. This time I got the name right. Jeff. You said to say Jeff again, you know. All right. So, so Joe, I'm, you second that? Joe. All right was written any other questions or comments all those in favor seven to nothing all right let me get back down to there oh, 13. i actually thought that article was going to get removed jim so oh really so, so too much foresight. <laughs> Why? Uh, Article 20, which is the fire vehicle stabilization <laughs> fund, which goes to Barbara's point that there is a plan next year to purchase a replacement for Westview One. And at this point, we will have $57,350 if we put these, this 50,000 50, in there. To start, What's that represent? About ten percent of what's going to cost? I th I think it was seven hundred thousand. Yeah. Okay. Oh, it's less than ten. Less than ten. I, I have no issue with the article. Uh, I, I, again, the summary box. Do, do we want to uh, at least give a preview of when we think the next vehicle will oh, be and the approximate yeah. cost? Yeah. When yeah. to purchase vehicle? Fiscal year twenty four. We'll put that in there, and you know, in the details, the numbers we have at this point. I mean, that, I mean that's, that educates the voter, so that's good. That's what we're trying to do. And Barbara, if we wanted to use free cash, we could use free cash to put into the stabilization fund to buy this if we wanted to, right? 
Well, yeah, the town can spend that money anyway. Yes, we could. We could. Well, you can't. You can't because the article is written says to raise and appropriate. Oh, but that could have been an option. Could have been an option. Okay, just curious. Oh, I see. We're yeah, talking about this article. Yeah, we could have. We could use it. We could have funded another way. I guess. Yes. Mm -hmm. All right. So Article Twenty. Oh, I, oh, I need motion. I'll make a motion that uh, Finance Committee recommend the town vote to approve Article 20 as written. I have a second. And any further questions or comments? All those in favor? Seven to nothing. Um, OPEB, you know, this is the ongoing funding of a, you know, basically a fund to meet our obligations for our employees when their future, future costs. Our reliability is very, very high. We're not even close to meeting it, but we are showing positive actions by funding this consistently. And so it's uh, good for our... We're, we're consistent with the rest of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. Yes. <laughs> Kevin, I'll make a motion that the Finance Committee recommend the town vote to approve Article 21 as written. Great, thank you. Second. Kathy. Questions or comments? All those in favor? Seven to nothing. Um, Reevaluation interim adjustments. Standard article every year. Yep. I'll make a motion that the Finance Committee um, recommend the town vote to approve Article 22 as written. Okay. I have a second. Larry. Larry, okay. I don't usually do more. Huh? I we usually did more, but I no, that sounds like right the right number. Yeah. I did 10 last year. Okay. Oh, okay. I don't know why I had it. Was, it, it, it used to be more, but. Uh, Revaluations used to be every three years, and now they're every five. Oh, okay. <laughs> that makes sense. Why has it changed? Good to yeah, know. Yeah. Hmm. All right. So I have a first and a second to approve the article as written. Any further comments? All those in favor? All right. Seven to nothing. And then <laughs> Article Twenty Three is the um, you know the limits that, that the various boards who have revolving funds can spend out of that in a given fiscal year. This is a, another one of the standard housekeeping articles. I'll make a motion that the Finance Committee recommend the town vote Article 23 as written. Do I have a second? Larry? Further questions or comments? Okay, all those in favor? Add seven to nothing. Great. That's where this is where's my target to try and get to tonight. I am expecting, as you <coughs> saw, that we've got some you know, adjustments coming. Now, now a new set of things here, looking at the warrant articles. But a lot of placeholders. Um, like so I'm, I'm hoping that the Board of Selectmen in their next meeting Sense. solidifies and gets their part of this done so that we have everything we need in the next week to get in, uh, so that we can formulate and put together the report of the Finance Committee. Um, all right, so that gets us through the, this, which is the annual town meeting. Warren Article Special Town Meeting. We discussed the report of the Finance Committee. We do have another set of meeting minutes that was sent out today. I believe everybody got a copy of those. Um, it's the 331 minutes. Are we at a point where we think we can actually take them up for a vote? That rolling discussion. We have, you know, the colored changes so people can see what was added. You did a great job with it, so. Are you Mr. Wadick, are you? This is usually your traditional. i the minutes as, the most recent version of the minutes is presented and amended. Okay. 
was the meeting. 31, Jim says we adopt them as written. Do I have a second? Any further questions or comments related to them? All those in favor? All right, seven to nothing. Um, wait a second. All right. What? I'm going to abstain because I wasn't at the meeting. Oh, oh you're absent. Uh, I'm no. sorry. I saw your name listed there. So isn't Joe. So oh. it's going to be hmm. five zero two. I just looked at the names and I see the word absent of now. Sorry. Thank you for pointing that out. So then we'll go with, you know, five zero two. Thank you for correcting that. Huh? Who's the other Me and Joe. Oh, okay. I just, I just read all the names and it just completely glossed over the word absent. Um, okay, so old business? Anybody? Yes. Oh, great. What we got? Um, one of the, uh, oh, this we is had the approved the uh, funding of the road program. So I did, and there were some questions as to what, what the plan was. So I, d I did um, talk to Butch. Um, big picture, you know, uh, the long-term plan and rating system, uh, that's in there on a shelf somewhere, um, not something that is actively used and has been used recently where we kind of rate every road. There's, there's a program that was done by some outside folks, uh, but, you know, the next year plan is what I just handed out. Um, I, I think someone mentioned that we usually include the plan in the finance committee book. I, I would just say it, it's nice information. However, this is the plan. You have a new DPW director coming on, may want to relook at the plan and alter this. Uh, the level of funding, the costs may change, and you might have to take something off. So I'm, I'd be a little hesitant to include the plan and, and people expecting their road to be done and then other things come up to prevent that unless you caveat what, what we put in there. But this is the plan. Um, we also talked about f f the level of funding of the article at 125000 and we used to, or 50000 we We've done it at 400,000 lately uh, in, in prior years. So right now we're, we're working off of the chapter 90 funds that we haven't necessarily spent in past years. There's a $4 million balance in those funds to, to, to um, uh, do, do some of the road work in the coming years. Out of last year's appropriation, 100,000 plus is still left over that will carry forward plus the 150, I think we have in this year's article. Uh, Butch felt was was sufficient to handle other issues that kind of come up dur during the year there. Thank you, Mike, for <coughs> the legwork here. Uh, I agree with you that we should not include this in the plan for a couple reasons. One is, uh, unlike the plan that we used to em employ and publish, this one does not list literally every single road in town. They used to. The, many people will say, huh? Uh, you know, where, where's 131? Where's, you know, so forth. And <coughs> the way it used to be was not only every single road, its length, and then a description of its condition, which is drawn from the American Society of Civil Engineers criteria, takes into account the the subsurface material, the weather, uh, what the uh, speed limit is, uh, are there buses, I mean commercial buses and tractor trailers or, or not and so forth, constituent materials, and the year when it would either be repaired, maintained, or paved basically from scratch. It was extremely informative. It answered questions it did not create questions that it did not answer and it was uh, almost a work of art i mean it was just excellent we now have uh, as i understand it a first rate absolutely stellar new uh, dpw director which isn't to say we haven't got one right now and we'll see what she does but i'm i think this is useful but I don't think we want to put it, I'm agreeing with you, I don't think yep. we want to put it in the plan. And I think that broader book. plan you were talking about was out there, may not have been updated you know, on an annual basis, um, and, and it gives a big picture, but really 
um, uh, you know, what we're trying to do next year or the, or the near term is, is driven uh, l lately by, you know, the, the DPW director having a good handle on conditions in, in uh, the roadways and where the biggest priorities are. Um, and you may have in that plan a, a, a one mile long road that's got a, a small section with a problem, but yet it rates pretty good on the other criteria. And, and how do you factor that in there? Exactly. So, so the plans are really based on DPW director and, and the department itself out there every day kind of knowing where the issues and, and immediate needs are that they, that they have to address, uh, let alone pressure from residents or, or other, other folks in town who are saying, you know, my road's more important than anybody else for the following sure. reasons. So, sure, yeah. Yeah. thank you though. I just have one question on this, Mike, and maybe you don't know. Is, is the SY, is, I, I assume that's square yard? Square yards. Okay, because I mean, I know the previous generation, it was, they did it by linear foot, you know, however long the foot was, they had a foot thing, so that's okay. I mean, everyone does it their own way, so it's square yard, okay. I'm doing million repaving estimates for some of my projects, and I, I have, you know, uh, you know, pricing and discussions on 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 uh, per square foot, and 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 when I I looked at square yards, Butch says I've been doing this for a long time. We always talk square yards. What do you mean you use that that uh, that <laughs> method? So, <laughs> yeah. Right. And and linear feet's good, but you don't know if it's a 12 foot lane or a 25 foot lane. So you you got to get an area thing in there. So. Yeah, no, no, it's fair enough. Um, okay. Any other old business? Anyone? New business. Anybody? I have one if no one else does. Um, both Jim and I were invited, I know as representatives of the Finance Committee, to a Charter Review Committee meeting that takes place next week on Thursday at 4 p.m. in the afternoon. Neither one of us can attend because that's a really tough time for, for people to go to. Now, Larry, I, I believe you're on that committee. I am. Yeah, can you give us anything that preview I know I'm asking you to speak for a committee sure may not be able to. Uh, sure uh, the committee asked um, almost everybody in the uh, in, in town hall and across the street and um, public safety all, everybody with uh, supervisory responsibilities for their ideas the selectmen on just everybody and the general public uh, there is um, uh, there are a couple things that have come up that involve the Finance Committee, at least that's a suggestion that will be looked at by the Charter Review Committee. Uh, one is to uh, have a different framework for the appointment and reappointment of members. Currently it is done under the Charter by the moderator. There are suggestions that it be done by the finance director, another suggestion that it be done by the finance director and the assessor, another suggestion that it be done by the assessor and the finance director and a member of the board of selectmen and the moderator. Uh, and um, there is no action, no recommendation yet by the charter review committee. Uh, there are actually numerous uh, town-wide suggestions and a master list has been composed uh, and now it's soon to become a matter of just going right through and the moderator was uh, likewise invited uh, in the same invitation that the chair and the vice chair were uh, invited. Um, let me take a, a brief sidestep. Uh, I am acutely aware, and I guess the selectmen knew it when they appointed me, that it's five members. No finance committee member gets to vote twice on the same issue. That, and I, in our first meeting, I say our, the Charter Review Committee, I told them that. I said that if I vote at the Charter Review Committee on any given topic, that comes before the Finance Committee, then I will not vote at the Finance Committee and vice versa. So uh, I just would like that exposed because some people may not know that that's how it works. Um, and this is not a committee that is uh, 
created under uh, state law. For example, uh, there, uh, the school building committee says there shall be a member of the planning board, DPW representative, finance committee representative, and others. There, the, this committee has no choice but to send somebody. That's separate. And so I mentioned that so it doesn't somehow be blended with what actually is the case here. Um, I strongly recommend that the Finance Committee, other than myself, attend for the Finance Committee at that meeting. Whoever can make it should be there. Uh, I also am as sure as I can be that there will be no definitive action taken at that meeting. It is truly informational. And uh, things won't, will be done comprehensively, not on a piecemeal basis when it comes to uh, taking up everything within the entire charter because something uh, in one section could be undone by something in the other, another section. Got to be careful about that. Um, uh, I think, um, oh, one other thing. Um, the selectmen received the letter uh, written, signed by all of the Charter Review Committee members, not asking, telling them that there will be no recommendation in time for the, this year's annual town meeting. Further, that the Charter Review Committee's aim is to deliver a comprehensive proposal, a charter uh, for the board's review at such time that it is ample for the selectmen's review prior to a fall town meeting. But if that proves unworkable, they will be informed. The Charter Review Committee took to heart what the selectmen said when they appointed that committee. And this is a direct quote, you're on your own. Well, that's why they don't get asked, they get told. They don't gotta like it, but there it is. So the selectmen were only five months late in appointing the Charter Review Committee. And then it turned out that the, <laughs> the charter on the, on the website was wrong, was flat wrong. Two members of the current committee, the chair, Bill Haggerty, and myself were on the prior review committee, now six years ago. And after a couple of meetings, we said, this, this is not right. So we went to the state attorney general. State attorney general said, well, we got the one you put on the website, you, the town of Sturbridge. So that's further to the, besides the five months late getting appointed to why the Charter Review Committee is where it is at this juncture on a calendar. And there is literally no telling when it will be done. Uh, and it goes way, way beyond making sure that uh, the, the rhetoric and the syntax and the grammar are uh, uh, free of gender implications and the semicolons and the commas, which is not a minor matter, by the way. You take a comma out and you can actually change the number of people, for example. <laughs> it's pretty serious stuff, funny as that may sound. At all events, uh, I really do think that the Finance Committee should be in the room when the topic comes up uh, on May 5th. Uh, there'll be nothing definitive done that night. Uh, and I would like to suggest that the Finance Committee have a, an opinion on whether uh, the current method uh, of appointment of members and reappointment or non-reappointment of any given member, uh, whether that is in the town's interest or not. But the committee should have a point of view.
and it would be a clear conflict for me to sit there and represent the committee. I mean, my, the Finance Committee just gave a wonderful idea, don't you think, Larry? Yes, as a matter of fact, I do. That, that just doesn't work. So, so, so come, along those lines, Larry, uh, sitting here tonight having not given it a lot of thought, I don't see that there's an issue or a problem with the, with the way it's set up in Sturbridge. It has been working that way for however, however long. Uh, so when we start looking at, well, we should change it, I've got to wonder why and what we're getting from there. So I'm just curious as you go through that, is, is that Charter Committee looking at other communities across the Commonwealth to find out how their finance committee is appointed. And if 90% of them use the town moderator in that model, why, why would we change or, or right. you know, if it's scattered all over, then it says, you know, there are other models and we should be looking at the other, other yep. models. Uh, it, it, yes, it, it has. And uh, here's the scenario that uh, occurs. Um, when they're appointed, it's usually by the Board of Selectmen. Town administrator and the finance director in a town that does have a finance director, they don't all, presents a budget to the selectmen. Then it goes to the finance committee for the finance committee's views. Selectmen are very interested to hear from the finance committee because the answer will tell the selectmen how much and how long the finance committee members want to stay on the finance committee. That underserves the general public who are denied a separate point of view. Oh, I agree, 100%. Yep. But, yeah. but that argues for keeping it the moderator. Keeping it as is. You did raise a question, though, with, uh, Mike, which is, well, what's behind any other way? And it is, in the view of some people, just doesn't sit right that one person should make the decision of appointing and reappointing, or not, for such a consequential piece of work. I thought Mike's question was, what is there a general standard or practice or does it seem to be widespread it's pretty widespread uh, but, but there are a significant number uh, that who are appointed uh, committees that are, that are appointed by selectmen i think there are a few that are actually e elected and that's not um generally well received because the essence of a finance committee, in the view of many, is that it is apolitical, yeah. not even non-political, and that an election means, well, now we're going to have to take care of the nursery school parents. Let's see, what can we do? And one step in that direction, and it's curtains, in the view of others. And, and while we sometimes think you know we're, we have an important role because our motion is the main motion whatever it's really a recommendation at the end of the day it's it's town meetings action that goes from there and they're looking for some guidance from us from a financial perspective they said not a political perspective how are we going to fund this thing that's a reasonable budget that's that's what the selectmen and and, and others have, who run the town on a day-to-day -day basis want to do we can afford this thing, and this is the right way to fund these various items w within it uh, from a financial perspective. Uh, precisely. Uh, and some people then will say only, only one person appoints the finance committee, but everybody in the room at a town meeting can overrule the finance committee, mm -hmm. and the co finance committee has no recourse. That's really getting your shoulder looked over, as some will point out. And just an observation, the only elected position we're talking about in this is the moderator. And it emphasizes how important it is to elect the right person as the moderator. You have to be very selective in electing that person because the consequences are nine other people that the town has no control over. Just an observation. That is right. I don't know how the committee wants to do things uh, for the May 5th meeting. It's uh, here. Uh, it, sometimes it's in one of the smaller rooms. 
uh, at 4 p.m., usually done before 6 p.m. Thank goodness. I told you what it is, you really say it. <laughs> I just put in my calendar. Yeah. We'll try and use the sign, but I'd like to hear more opinions if anyone had. I think you expressed the thing. I, I was just reading the role and fu function of the Finance Committee in our board. And it, same one that's spread on the website, you know, that's that, that kind of check and balance that we stay apolitical and not. Right. I, I couldn't imagine. You know, this being an elected position, for one thing, because then we're no different than, you know, we're, we're kowtowing to certain people, you know, to get elected. Right. You know, maybe, you know, and th that just gets in the way. I just, I couldn't imagine that. Well, there is one other thing. I said there were a couple of things. Uh, and that is, it seems to be in flux, but in writing, anyway, the, the committee has received a suggestion that the Finance Committee's recommendations on all zoning articles be removed from the Finance Committee and that the effective recommendation in a town meeting comes directly from the Planning Board. That is a suggestion brought forward by one of the, well, these are all public documents. Anybody, I'll just tell you, Mary Blanchard. Uh, and, and anybody who wants to, I don't have the materials here, but anybody who wants to see it is certainly free to see it. It all happens in, in the sunlight. <laughs> there are no side meetings or any of that stuff. Uh, but uh, the rationale uh, in writing is that uh, the planning board is doing a very good job and uh, they have a lot of knowledge and they have public hearings and so they should be the ones. That's what it is. Now, I say it's in flux because the Charter Review Committee members, as far as, at least in my own experience, now and five or six years ago, do not communicate at all, except uh, on charter matters, except in the meetings. Well, I'm walking down the street and I'm told, I don't even know who it was, can't remember at the moment, well, yeah, they thought about that, and then they withdrew it, and uh, hell, I don't know. I've gotten nothing from the proponent of that uh, step to uh, contradict the original suggestion. So as far as I know, it is still in effect for consideration. Now, maybe it'll go nowhere. Maybe it'll go somewhere. Maybe somehow the baby gets cut in half. I don't know. But you asked, and I'm just trying to tell you what, uh, as it bears on the Finance Committee as an entity, because everything in the Charter bears on everybody all the time. But functionally, that's the other issue, at least so far. So would you, I'm just curious now, if you were to recommend as a committee changes in the Charter, would you also have to come forward then with all the changes to the general bylaws that need to reflect the change in the charter? Because, you know, the general bylaws for the Finance Committee says everything that gets acted upon on the town meeting floor needs a Finance Committee recommendation. The uh, charter, according to legal counsel for the town, has the effect of state law. And, it, and that uh, if, takes effect the moment that it passes has two steps. It's got to pass a town meeting, and if it passes there, it's then at an election. When that is announced by the town clerk at that moment, it becomes, it has the force of state law, in which case bylaws, which are outside the scope of the assignment in writing to the Charter Review Committee, the bylaws, if any would be applicable to approve changes, would have to be revised. Uh, the, uh, although people, as a matter of fact, say, oh, well, there's a bylaw, we can't do that, or whatever they say. Bylaws are subordinate to the charter. Okay. I so, just, you know. so I don't, I know you don't want to get into the charter discussion here, but on the matter you just brought up, I, I would agree that on zoning matters, the planning board are the experts, 
and you know we shouldn't be playing around with their articles and changing their wordies and, and stuff that's in there. They should bring it forward. Um, if, if that suggestion goes there, one would take it another step further and say maybe the Board of Selectmen shouldn't be making uh, uh, recommendations and voting on those because the planning board is the, the expert there. But I, I think it's appropriate for the Finance Committee to, to be uh, making recommendations on zoning articles, not going in there and changing it and acting like zoning um, experts or you know not liking the wording we think we got a better chance even though you guys have spent months in public hearings and doing that but but looking at the article from a financial perspective what's this doing to the art uh, to the town here from a financial perspective uh, are you allowing growth are you restricting growth that that impacts revenues the amount of money we can spend in the end um, so it, our, our review should be from a financial perspective and maybe it could be you know don't see anything harmful or whatever else so, but if, if it's certainly something that's going to have an adverse financial impact, uh, uh, even though zoning-wise and planning-wise it's good, you know, people sh should get that there. But changing the article and, um, and, and moving some things around because we think it's better language than what came out of that, I think, yeah, we've meddled too far if we were doing that. And I disagree with that for one because there are many times we've reviewed planning articles and we've come up with questions about wording or intent, and we've had, we've clarified their positions by reviewing them and saying, here's what we think it says, is this what you meant for it to say? And we've, we've clarified language and helped them, and I think craft better articles. I can't, I, I can't think of anywhere where we've gone and changed their intent at all, but it's just clarifying things within the article that we, I think we play an important role at doing. I just think on the committee generally, I, you know, my, my opinion is a little bit, you know, objectivity is critical, right? It checks and balances. And I think responsibility is, is critical. We're going to uh, go to the town meeting and they're going to have this budget and how many people will be there and how many people won't, who will read it all and not read it all. So there's a tremendous responsibility in us to, uh, to almost represent the people. Uh, as part of check and balances, because ultimately it's, it's their money, uh, a good portion of it, right? Uh, secondly, I think it's a responsibility working with the different departments, because I think two heads are better than one. And I think with us working with the departments, I think the town will end up with better outcomes and better decisions and better planning. So I, I think all of that's all positive, but all in line with we have to be objective. You know, and again, we've got to provide the checks and balances. And, and, and so, Larry, as you understand it, most of the most of these discussions are just solely about the appointment process. They're not anything about term limits and things like that, or only with respect to the finance committee. You mean? Yeah. Oh, the, correct. There are the two matters I, I mentioned: um, appointments and, appointments and uh, uh, zoning articles. So far, anyway, are the only things that directly involve this uh, finance committee. I mean, there are others. I'll just give you an example. Um, should the recreation department uh, head be reporting to the town administrator? At present, th that individual reports to the recreation committee. That's an example. Should that get changed? Uh, uh, the frequently questioned, well, should the annual town meeting be on a Saturday morning? Um, that usually is, it's pointed out that the people who leave early uh, in an evening, as at present, are the same people who on Saturday are driving kids to soccer games. They left early at night to relieve the babysitter. So where's the gain you know but that's another example of the kind of question and su uh, suggestion and some of them simply are not germane you know, they get thanked and, and so forth it's it just a case of somebody not understanding that what they are talking about is just doesn't go into a charter I mean, the charter has to be approved in totality or by item so you could it's all or nothing no, no. The uh, uh, the floor of the town meeting can change. 
Uh, no, no, but it, let's say those three issues. Yeah. Is the charter have to be specific at those three and you vote on all three or each of those gets voted oh, individually? No. Um, it's, uh, the warrant article is to accept as presented and that may have well, geez, scores of changes. Some are is like capitalization consistent throughout. Uh, but those are in there. So it's not like 74 separate votes. No, it's one vote, but it is up to the Charter Review Committee to spell out what they are. So people know what they are being asked to consider and vote on. But Larry, you could bring one article with 74 changes on it. And if there's like two highly controversial items in there, that, that would blow up all the others. You, you could bring two separate articles, one that addresses 72 of them and one that addresses two others separately. That could go independent of what the first one does, right? Well, uh, it could be hard to know just what turns out to be explosive. Uh, you know, New England town meetings, a uh, $100 million bond issue goes through in 30 seconds, but that $75 street light that's two and a half hours. So it's really hard to know. And then if there were more than one motion, what happens if one, either one passes and the other one fails? You then have an incomplete document. And you'd have to make sure if it did that, that the two could stand alone independently if, if you were to go there. But, yep. Well, you, maybe I don't understand what you mean. You're, you're, you're right. You, would, you, you, you want to make sure that if you did split it into two, that if A failed and B passed, it could stand on, those changes could stand on their own. It didn't require all the others in there. So that, but anyway, your, your plan is to bring yeah. one article with all the yes, changes. Yes, yeah. It's all uh, or nothing. But um, think, uh, almost think of the human anatomy. Yeah, okay, we'll change the elbow. What happened to the center of gravity? So things get connected. It's very hard to take something out and call it freestanding. Mm. Well, good luck with that. So, I guess I, I want to try and summarize where we're at with this. So, I, I get the sense, maybe I'm wrong, that, that no one thinks a change should be made to the appointment process at this point in time. That in my opinion, I agree that the should be followed. And, and to, yeah, I think Ken had the right words. It, it provides a right level of checks and balances. Mm -hmm. it, the key thing is it's apolitical. Right. Yeah. We vote in the best interests of the taxpayers mm -hmm. in the town of Sturbridge. There's no political influence. We're not trying to pander to any group or any individual. And, and that's it's one of the things. Mm -hmm. I'm just thinking, you know, if we start to introduce, and in, 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 it's been my experience, and I've I think when you were chair, you only just had Mike, right? Mike, Michael mm -hmm. Platt. But I, I was here with um, Miller, and, oh, then, yeah, Mike and then, Miller, and then the uh, and Joe Rokas. Joe Rokas. And they, they were all very much, they appointed us, but then they were hands off. And what, I, what, what worries me when we start adding multiple appointing authorities, are they, are they going to just let us do our job? the way we've been doing it and you know our practices have been pretty good they're not perfect but they're pretty good and um i just would hate to see that that interference now you know well you guys maybe should do this or that mm -hmm. you know right now it's completely hands off i appointed you 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 know we kind of police each other and we like you say make the try to make the best apolitical rec representation to the town meeting body you know, the first uh, moderator I knew was Neil Brandt, uh, the late Neil Brandt, and um, he took office just after the Korean War, and uh, I, he'd been in office 20 years or a little more when I got to know him, and he was that way, and every single one, right up to now, every moderator, basically says, uh, good luck. Yeah. And that's but it. You play devil's advocate. The reality is that there could be a moderator yes. that could wield a tremendous amount of power by who they're willing to uh, butt. Um, 
the solution of making it either a function of the board or multiple people doesn't necessarily resolve that. So, Yeah, it brings to mind what uh, Winston Churchill said, which was that uh, democracy is the worst form of government except for all the others. <laughs> yeah. And the one overriding thing we have is town meeting where all the individual citizens tell us where to go. Yeah. And vote with the way they, what they think is right. I mean, they'll, they'll smell out a phony in a heartbeat. Or they'll still. I've never done the calculations. It would be tedious, and after doing them, what have you really learned that's more than sort of an impression? But my, my sense f for attending this annual and special town meetings for almost 49 years is that when the selectmen and the finance committee differ in their recommendations, the townspeople adopt the recommendation of the Finance Committee at about 97.5% of the time. And that's because I believe what people tell me over the years, including when I was not on the Finance Committee, which is Finance Committee does its homework and has to prove that it did. It can't just say something. And it can sit in front of four or five hundred people, any one of whom can say, oh yeah, really? How did you get to that? And right then and there, they got an answer. And the public seems to like that. I, I don't disagree. I mean, that's kind of been how, I, how we work this thing. Yep. That's amazing statistic. I wouldn't. I wouldn't guess it. I. Yeah. That's, that's. That's. Well, that's my impression. No, no. I'm saying that's 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 good though. I mean, that's solid. That's the way it should be. Yeah. yeah. Um, all right. I'll see if I can. Hmm? Kathy and I will try to get there. <laughs> <laughs> I'll bring my. You got the money, honey. I got the time. <laughs> I mean, it's an important discussion, and it's a, it would be a big change in the, in, in how we operate. And, and, and you know, you, I, I have to think about it a little more and, and mull it over. Do you, right. well, as yeah. I said, do you think it's going to be an issue, or is it one of those things you go to the meeting, they listen, and it, it, it goes away, or is it really going to be something that they really take up and say, we want to do something, we want to make a decision on this, or is it just an idea at this point, like somebody decided... This may be a good idea. Let's talk about it. And okay, not a good idea. Uh, uh, the the charter review committee takes seriously every single uh, suggestion or proposal, including those that, on their face, are irrelevant because they were submitted seriously. So they're taken seriously. Yeah. Whoever submitted it, and they could have done it anonymously, and that. Uh, certainly has happened, so there's nobody you can go and say thank you to. But the committee thanks, and where uh, it is something relevant, and uh, the, the suggester is known, they get a thanks, and there's now a master list, as I think I indicated, and starting on this next meeting on the 5th, going to start at the top and go right down. And the list was uh, not crafted. It's uh, random because the idea was to try to avoid ranking them without realizing. Oh. It is about as kosher as it can be made. You know, I'm just curious though, is there any discussion about changing the town administrator actually to come out from under the board of selectmen and actually become a town manager? Right. Not yet, but... I, I think there was one submitted, wasn't there? Well, then, all right, that's fine. I just don't happen to know that yet. Because, you see, we're, committee members are not in contact except in public meetings. So the chair or someone on the committee who has been deputized to go around, because there are uh, <coughs> information boxes in different places around town and collect stuff, so there may well have been that. Uh, I won't, won't know until it's in public. Interesting. Okay. So this is actually the very first public meeting you guys are having? Oh, no, all the meetings are public. And, we, and there have been um, 
Well, at the last meeting, uh, the Conservation Commission came in and there was someone else on, a, on another, uh, on, a, on a trails issue, uh, a, a recommendation, and they just lay out their rationale. And uh, if it's not clear to any one member or another, there's a, a colloquy to try to draw them out to understand in whole what it is they actually see would be, would properly belong in the charter to be lived with for five years minimum. And uh, it is living in suspense. I haven't any idea what, how I'm gonna vote on anything. It's, it, I, it probably overdraws it to say, imagine you're on a jury. Many, many people have been, I have, others have. And you hear the prosecution, okay, got that. Now you hear the defense, okay, and you got the judge's rules, uh, guides, requirements, and then the jury and you talk and you figure it out. But you don't go in saying, well, I think this is, you know, looks guilty to me, you know. Uh, no, no, no. Uh, it's, 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 uh, it's very goody two-shoes, I'll tell you. No, I appreciate that too. That's good that it's you know, trying to be completely, again, apolitical or trying to be as neutral as possible. Yeah. The whole thing, because it could become very political very quickly. You are changing the way the government works for the entire community. Well, the community would do that if they got yeah, such yeah. a recommendation. Um, there may well, I've seen it happen in the past, a majority report and a minority report. I saw that happen. And on the floor, the chair uh, made the case, and I thought, I'll be damned, did an excellent job of sounding like he favored both, and they were opposite. Only later he said, after the vote, by the way, I disagreed with just about everything I said from this point on. You couldn't tell. It was just expertly done. Because look what's at stake. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, thank you for providing some of the information. Sure. Because there wasn't a lot there, just I'm saying we're inviting you to attend and without giving any context. Well, that, you know. that was probably, I th you're right. And I think that was the result of trying to be neutral. And not to say, uh, you know, take this up or take that up. So it got just washed. Right. A and it, the, What's hard to wash is the 4 p.m. time. Yeah, right? okay. <laughs> but but the committee was... a tough time to... Of course it is. Uh, but the, the, the committee tried to be as neutral as it could. You all come. The subject is the charter. You hold an office. We're all ears. That's basically it. Any other questions or comments? Any other new business? Oh, hey, Lisa. Something really quick. Sure. With all of the helping me kind of transition into doing this, particularly when there's a lot of discussion, not just the straight votes, um, at someone's suggestion, uh, It's okay. Um, sorry, it was to have kind of a guidelines of how to do this. So I'm sorry. Give me one second. It just basically said that I will. I'm sorry, the, the last and time. And then review it with the um, the changes. And submit it. Ask for any changes to be Very submitted to me. Few. Clarification and everything. Review it again, submit it, and then have it voted up. I know that sounds obvious, but if I could put it into steps like that, it would help me. And what I would do is just is going on it pages. It. Just, so that, just so you know what I'll be emailing, I don't want to do it. We, we would have to make sure three. we avoided any thing that, that we're deliberating outside of an open body. So if you sent that out and someone actually made comments and just instead of sending it directly back to you, 
sent it back to all of us. Yeah, you wouldn't, but it could happen. Okay, and, well, and, and, yeah, yeah, that's what I'm worried about. That we. No, no, it, I, I, I think the way we handled it is when the minutes go out and we read them, we don't discuss them with each other until we meet here again. Right. And then all the revisions happen here. Yeah. And then right. it's done at that point. But we can't be on. Uh, yeah. If you send me something, I can't get back to you okay. and say change this unless everybody. And, and if we do that, it's a meeting. We can't do that because it's got to be right. on other boards where they will, nothing of substance, but they will say, whether it be a typo or, again, minor things, they'll say, oh, you, you know, messed up that word or some, not, not that it's not taken, actually. And then they do all the little things and then submit them. And I then vote on them. So and I'm happy to do it. Yeah, we, we typically haven't done that, so I would say, this last set of minutes was, you know, more free flowing versus pretty straightforward. I'm hoping that the next couple sets you have are pretty straightforward, where you, we're we're not trying to add a whole lot of discussion that people thought were important in there. So uh, draft them up. If if you want someone to take a look at them, uh, you can send them to Kevin or I. We'll we'll kind of, you know, give you some feedback on what we see there. But then send them out to the group. Typically, you know, we don't get into the the lengthy discussion we had on that last set, and if there are typos and commas and, and other little things that people thought, hey, I, this comment was made and I think it's important should be in there, we'll collect them that night and then approve, hopefully get to a point where we can approve them as, as, as uh, corrected that night and then we can clean them up and file sure, with the town clerk. That would make, that would make it clear for you. Thank you. I think John is the John. Really? She was the secretary. Right. Technically, yeah. Okay. I think she did. Well, what Kathy was just telling me is that prior secretary might have done exactly that. That you know, you would send it to Mike, and we would take a quick look at the spelling and the punctuation, okay. then send it back to you to send out to everybody. Okay. And at that point, there would be no discussion yeah. until the meeting. Okay, in that way, it's not everybody going, oh, this little thing's wrong, this, which, which are wrong, I'm sure. And that way, we get someone to just kind of edit it. So. Just one. I, I, one. I thought that Joey did, but yeah. I'm it, not yes. sure. And, I and that's what I said. But that's just if, one. If, if you would yeah. like me as the clerk to take a look at yeah. your minutes yeah. just to make sure I think everything's in there, happy to do that. I'd like to think that you've got it covered, we're in a roll, and I don't need to look at them and, and get them back to you, but if you, if you would like a, a set of eyes on them, feel free to send them to me in advance and I'll give them a quick look. Um, but I, I, what I see um, uh, um, might be different than what other members see and feel is important. So that's where hopefully when people get it, they can come back to that meeting uh, that we're gonna vote on them and have some specific changes that we can take a look at mark it up so that you know you, you and I can get the get them incorporated correctly if they are accepted by the rest of the committee and, and we'll be done with it that we night. have any procedures because let's face it, the other person who I what it know is it's only a few minutes but it sounds like she did a tremendous job and is here for a while but a new person comes on board and we had a we had a process that worked she's she has nothing to say this is the way it operates and this is the way right should this be in I don't want to make a big, big committee of this thing or a big policy, but should it be something in writing that if somebody else comes on board five years from now, three years from now, they have something to know how to handle this, or every time somebody comes in, it doesn't change that wheel. frequently. Right. So, yeah. and I don't. I mean, okay. That's and and she happened to come in at like yeah, the most freewheeling meeting that we, we have. There was a lot. Of, there was a lot of comments. There was no. I, I would say the process worked. There's no re reason to document it. I think oh, yeah. we just hit a meeting where. There was more discussion, you know, is that sentence or that comment, you know, worthwhile to put in here or not? Some people thought it was, and we, we have some new members as well kind of, you know, getting used to the process. So hopefully that was our, our learning curve, and the next ones go a little quicker. All right. If there's no other new business, I think we have public access. I see no member of the public. So... Then we move to adjournment. Do I have a motion to adjourn? <laughs> Jeff? Jeff, oh, Jeff please stop. <laughs> and Ken seconds. And so, all those in favor? 
<laughs> yeah, seven to nothing at nine fifty.